Texarkana Football is brought to you by Baptist Bookstore, Chick fil A, Middleway Credit Union, or Chevrolet, Red River Credit Union, Southern Arkansas University. Texarkana, Arkansas School District. Texas A&M, Texarkana. State Farm, Agent Greg Cockrell. University of Arkansas Hope in Texarkana. Pleasant Grove ISD. Guarantee Bank and Trust. Fox Sports, Texarkana. Liberty Ilo Independent School District, Texarkana Emergency Center, the Texarkana Independent School District, Beach Street First Baptist Church, and the Pop Pop Shop. Welcome Texarkana football fans to the first football game here of the 2019 season. Joe Adams along with Ray Angle, all the staff here at KLFI TV bringing you tonight's broadcast. And Ray, this is uh, one of those ball games that we always look forward to. Uh, not a district or conference ball game, but a, a ball game that is uh, involving two teams here in the same city. And Joe, when they play on the first game of the season, there's a lot of uh, unknown elements that we're going to have to deal with as we watch the coin toss here. Liberty will receive the opening kickoff. Leopards in the maroon uniforms with white helmets will receive the football. Arkansas High in the white uniforms with the red maroon helmets, let's call them, will uh, we'll be kicking off. Captains for the Leopards were Shannon Roy, Ethan Brooks, Corbin White, and Reginald Woodside. Captains for the Razorbacks were Larry Jefferson, Sean Forbeck, Travion Ross, and Michael Johnson. And we're on the campus here of Liberty Ilo High School, Harris Field. The uh, Leopards two-time state champions, 1999 and 2006. And we're getting set here for the national anthem.
Tremendous job there by the Liberty Alo High School Marching Band with our national anthem. And Ray, talking about these two teams, Liberty Alo new coach this year and first year coach Clint King, also athletic director Barry Norton in his third season here at Arkansas High. Both these teams coming in here tonight, uh, the one word you could use to describe them would be youth. That's right, Joe, and both teams last year had very, very uh, uh, wonderful seasons, playoff bound, uh, very strong years. But uh, Liberty Ilo graduated uh, a large group of seniors, and they retained 19 Letterman off last year's team. Arkansas High graduated 17 and only retained 12 off of last year's team. So a lot of people that are going to be playing new positions tonight, and it's going to be a real revelation to find out, uh, you know, just how much they have to learn or how ready they are right now for this first game. You know, and one of the good things about it being a, a non-district or non-conference ball game is you do get to answer some of those questions about, you know, quarterback positions, uh, about uh, turnover situations, things like that. Things that you really don't want to be answering as you get into conference or district play. That's right, Joe. The Razorbacks do return their starting quarterback from last year, but Liberty Ilo will be uh, playing new new quarterbacks at the starting position, and they may rotate between two different players. Set for the opening kickoff here. Very high kick, going to be gathered in at the 16-yard line. Actually, ball's on the, ball's ground, on the ground, and the Razorbacks have recovered at the 23-yard line. So the first turnover of the ball game, scooped up over there by Michael Bowman. And so the Leopards turn it over, and that's another one of the things that Ray was talking about before the ball game. First game here, you got some first game jitters. Turnover's going to play a, a big role in this ball Most game. Most of the time, Joe, your special teams are the ones that are the, have the most uh, seasoning to do. Let's say in the first game, you're going to see more errors out of your kicking game, both kicking and receiving, than you will the rest of the season put together. Well, Liberty Idol here in the spread. Oh, excuse me, uh, Arkansas High in the spread. Liberty Idol on defense here. And uh, ball carrier is Corey Blair, and we talked about how Arkansas High had a, a, a quarterback coming back. He doesn't get the start tonight. Uh, you you get like a young man by the name of Braylon Bishop. Yeah, Braylon Bishop, a move in uh, last year to uh, Arkansas High from Ashdown. Uh, tremendous baseball player gets the start tonight here at quarterback for the Razorbacks. So second and eight, Joe. Blair is the tailback. A little bit of a high snap, little screen pass here. And uh, get it. It, Blair's going to take it all the way. And actually, that, that's going to be a, considered a run. That was a lateral right. behind that, the line of scrimmage. That was a backwards pass. And Joe, had he dropped it, it would have been a live ball. But the Razorbacks uh, sync up nicely, the quarterback and the running back, and a very well executed play. 21 yard throw and catch for the touchdown from. Braylon Bishop to Tory Blair, and we saw Blair last year play a lot uh, as a sophomore. He is a tremendous running back. Christian Stewart on to attempt the point after for the Razorbacks. Graydon Martin, the holder. Good snap, kick is up, and kick is good. Seven to nothing here for the Razorbacks. 11-18 to play. We'll be back right after this. First. History has brought you to this point. Generations have led the way. At Red River Credit Union, the tradition continues. Financial options are available for every age, including checking and savings accounts and financial counseling. Members enjoy mobile banking and direct deposit, and children use their Homer accounts at Red River to learn how to save for the future. Red River Credit Union, with locations in Shreveport, Grambling, and now open in Marshall, Texas. 
What's so special about credit unions? You! What's so special about Millway? You! At Millway, you'll find it's comfortable to talk to us about your money and your financial goals. You'll see that we're truly concerned about helping you reach your goals. It's about lower loan rates, fewer fees, and higher returns on your savings. It's, it's all about taking care of you, the member, and helping you with your financial needs. Our goal is to make your life more affordable and enjoyable for you and your family. And we're back here at Harris Field as the Razorbacks going to strike first for the 21-yard run by Tory Blair. And Helmut's going to be off there. And that is Damian Henderson, the return man. The return, oh, the return will, man for Liberty Ilo looks like number 21, and that was Damian Henderson. Joe he got his helmet torn off, and I'm surprised the official didn't blow the whistle right at that moment for safety's sake. But yeah, he absolutely, seems to be okay. you got to blow the whistle, and you know that's a that's certainly something that you'd look forward to do next time. Officials stop and play here. Not sure what's going on. Yes. And that uh, Damian Henderson has to stay off for a play because his helmet came off, even though he didn't pull it off. All right, so handoff here to the tailback, gets up to the 20. That is Henderson. That is Henderson. Yeah, he, uh, I, I, the only reason he could be back in Ray is that they determined that the tail but was ripped off. Yeah. Uh, and that's what they would allow him back on. And I think that's what happened. So they do let him back in the ball game. And Zeke Brown gets the start here at quarterback tonight for the Leopards. And we'll probably see Parker Goodman play, uh, come in and play quarterback as well. And that's Henderson again, the ball carrier. One of the uh, Arkansas high players just almost got him by the face mask, but let go at just about the time he realized his fingers were in that face mask area. Damon Henderson, one of the best running backs in this area. Uh, and not sure how much we're going to see him tonight. He's going to play both ways to be in the defensive backfield, also playing running back as well. Third down here, four for the Leopards, and there's a penalty flag going to be. Did the, the, too much time? Did they lose the 25 second yeah. clock? False start. So instead of third and four it'll be a third down and nine here for the leopards ball at their own 16 yard line official stopping play again timeout arkansas high all right so the razorbacks take a timeout here 9 54 to play in the first quarter we'll be back after this Back here at Harris Field as the Razorbacks took a timeout there. Obviously didn't see something they liked there with the offensive formation from the Leopards. So Razorbacks taking a defensive timeout here up seven to nothing. And, and, and Ray, the Leopards right here, third down at nine. Uh, while you'd like to get this first down, you, you can't afford another mistake right here. Uh, if you don't have no, an open receiver. At this point in your field, yeah. no, you cannot turn the ball over right here. So. You have to be a little, a little uh, judicious, Joe. And I don't think you're going to see the Razorbacks line up in single coverage like they did uh, in that previous formation. That may be why they took the timeout. Yeah, that very well could be. And if you're the Razorback secondary, 
if the ball is thrown short, just keep it in front of you, make the tackle, get off the field. Uh, and if you're a Liberty Ilo, again, you cannot force it right here. If you don't have an open receiver, um, you know, you're not going to force it. And pressure coming from that Razorback defense. And going to be run out of bounds short of the first down marker there is Brown. First out of bounds by number 17, Eric Flowers. Flowers makes the tackle. Needed to get to the 25, Joe, and didn't make it. I, they're going to mark it at the 23, so it's going to be fourth and two. And I don't see Liberty Allo going for it here on no, the uh, uh, you know, Again, I don't either, Joe. There's the replay. And as you see, he's got a little room, but they, they string him out and push him out just before he can get to the first down. Round eight to play. Leverage going to have to take a timeout here. Didn't have enough men timeout. on the field. So another timeout here with 9.45 to play. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. teach students how to be productive members of society. Dual credit college courses ensure that LEHS graduates have a head start on their continuing education. Extensive career and technical education offerings give students job-ready skills to compete in a shrinking job market. Extracurricular activities, including band, academic UIL, and theater, allow students to display outstanding artistic skills. And as always, LEHS athletic teams are among the top in the state. Liberty Isle High School truly is a great place for students and educators. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy, I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orshody.com. The new OR PreCheck tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orshody.com or PreCheck. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to OR Chevy, where buying a car is easy. Surf orshody.com! 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. That's a fake, Joe. Yeah, and they snapped to the up back. They sure did. And, and that's and really a surprise at that point in the field. They caught the Razorbacks by surprise, they too. They certainly did. Damian Henderson, the, the up man, takes the snap. And, you know, if you're the Razorbacks, you got to be wary that Damian Henderson's up that close. And uh, he certainly made the Razorbacks pay right there. Uh, risky call, but. The Leopards pull it off and get the first down at the 31-yard line. So, new set of downs here for the Leopards. 9.30 to play here in the first quarter. Leopards down 7-0 to the Razorbacks. Pass oh. is going to be dropped. Very dangerous there when you pop, bobble it like that. That defensive uh, back may just be able to snap it right out of the air. So. Uh, lucky break there for the Leopards, going to bring up second and ten. Corbin White, the intended receiver, a nice pass. And, and what White did that time, Ray, was he looked up right when the pass was getting there. He wanted to see where the defender was, took his eye off the ball, and not able to bring it in. Razorbacks now just keeping six in the box. And the Leopards are going to have to recognize that and use the middle of the field, Joe. He's Najee Taylor with a huge Great. tackle there. And I'll tell you what, Joe, that ball, I'm not sure, was forward. So uh, had it come out, it, it uh, would have been a fumble. Yeah. It's going to bring up third and 16. Leopards back Take the to replay the here. 25. So third and 16 now for the Leopards. And again, the same thing here for the Leopards as we saw previously. You cannot force the football right here. Pressure coming. Nope. And they're going to sack him. So that's Larry Jefferson gets to him. They're going to lose another yard and a half. Going to bring a fourth down and about 17 yards, Joe. And I don't think we'll see a fake punt. And somebody's down for the Leopards. Yeah, we've got an injured player down here for the Leopards. Trying to see the number there. Maybe Corbin White. Not sure. They're going to look at him. And as they attend to that injured player, let's take a break and we'll be back right after this. Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams, it was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. 
In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected. But his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're going to go back out and play the second half because we've only played the first half. I'm Craig Jenkins, pastor at Beach Street. Maybe you've been running the wrong direction. Let me say this to you. It's only the first half. There's still a second half to go. You've got an opportunity to make a change and a new direction in your life. I'd like to invite you to Beach Street this Sunday at 815 or 1045. In one of those services, you're going to be encouraged to go in a different direction. I look forward to seeing you there. Trustin Jones, the injured lineman. Fourth for down and 17, a, two, and a high snap, it's over his head. Razorbacks are gonna be all over it. And the Razorbacks have They cannot it. advance it though, Joe, no. so it will be Razorback ball on the, about the four yard line or so. They're gonna mark it right at the five yard line. So another turnover here for the Leopards and a high snap. And as we said before, the special teams are going to be the, the, the area of the game for both schools that are going to have the most uh, hiccups first game of the year. Well, the Razorbacks with great field position at the five. Took over at the 23 on the fumble and the opening kickoff, punched it in. Now take it over at the five yard line with another very short field here for the power eye offense. formation. Blair, the ball carrier. Blair going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Number three, Blair on the carry. Second Joe, seven great seven job three. by that Leopard defensive okay. line. They stacked everything up. They took on the lead blockers. Second down and goal for the Razorbacks. Razorbacks getting, waiting for the play. They've got it now. Two wide receivers, a man in the slot. Joe, they've got an extra blocker on the left side. Now Liberty Ilo moves another player in. Yeah, we got movement on the left side by the Razorbacks. Ball start against the Razorbacks. So instead of second down and five, or second and goal from the five, it'll be second and goal from the 10. We'll see what the Razorbacks dial up right here. Still second down, right? Yes. Second down and goal to go from the 10 now. Ball's Pass caught is just inside the 10, and he's going to get down to about the 7 or 8, and that's it. Going to bring up third down. That's Deshaun Patterson, or Deshaun Patterson. Deshaun Patterson, he's taking down by number 13, Keontae Featherson, on number 25, Karan Eaton. They're bringing third goal. So third and goal now for the Razorbacks. At the eight yard line, 6.50 to play here in the first quarter. Blair, the tailback. Bishop, the quarterback. Bishop back to pass. Pass is thrown and incomplete in the corner of the end zone to Tavry Green. So it'll bring up a fourth down for the Razorbacks. And the field goal team is going to come on here for the Razorbacks. Christian Stewart, sophomore quarterback here, will attempt the field goal. This will be a 25-yard attempt for Stewart. Not a whole lot longer than an extra point, but it's not lined up in the middle of the field. Kick is up, and Looks like kick he's is missed it left, according to the to officials. The so the Leopards are able to hold right here and keep the Razorbacks off the board. And you know, Ray, Ray, that's a great job by that 
Liberty out on defense. You, you have a possession from the other team starting at the five yard line. Yeah. And you and keep you, them from getting any points. You move them backwards and prevent them from scoring. So great job. That's got to lift up the Leopard spirits there. They, they really dodged a bullet because that was a big turnover. And you know, we thought coming in tonight that the Leopard defense was, was going to be pretty solid, even though they're young. Uh, and, and it looks like right now that's what's going to have to happen. There's the Leopard defense that's really going to have to carry uh, the team at this point until that offense starts to, you know, get it together a little bit here. You know, and again, it is the first ball game. And, and generally, defenses are, are ahead of offenses early in the year. Absolutely, Joe, and that's, that's always the case uh, throughout every level of football, college, even up to the pros. Leopards have to get a substitute in. Remember, they lost an offensive lineman on that last play they had possession of the ball. Brown gets the snap, hands it off to Henderson. Henderson makes the move and it's going to be going to have the first down at the 31-yard line. Excellent run there, Joe, and, and uh, great balance and, and uh, very, uh, very tough to zero in on one of the Razorbacks completely missed him. Yeah, Damian Henderson again, the ball carrier. And, and we knew coming in here that Damian Henderson, one of the premier backs here uh, in this part of uh, the country, and doing a great job so far here for the Leopards. Again, same play right here. And uh, this time the Razorbacks do a little bit better job bottling it up. But I tell you, the Razorbacks are going to have to do something because even on that play, they gained six yards. Yeah, Kalen Harris makes the tackle, but and, you know, you see Henderson, he runs hard and he, he's slippery too. It's very difficult to get a, a good shot on him and uh, doing a good job there. As you mentioned, though, the Razorbacks are going to have to do a better job of tackling. Second down, five here for the Leopards. Henderson, the ball carrier. Henderson going to be stacked up. Good job there by number 32 for the Razorbacks. And that is Dante Willis. Dante Willis, and he did a senior, Joe, and he did a great job. That yeah. Razorback defensive line is the most experienced group on the field for the Razorbacks tonight. Yeah, it looked like Henderson had a little bit of room, and Willis came in there and stuffed it. Oh, and uh, misplayed here. And that was... Corbin White, the ball carrier. Really, uh, everybody looked a little unsure of themselves on that play, Joe. Uh, a lot of the Leopards didn't seem to be really moving, like didn't really know what was going on. So the Leopards here face a fourth down and five now after the loss. Are they missing anybody on the punt team? No, they're getting two guys off. They have all 11 out there. Brown, buddy, deep for the Razorbacks is Brown. Zeke Brown, the quarterback, is also the punter. This time the snap is good. And uh, Razorbacks got away with it there. I counted 13 Razorbacks on the field. <laughs> One ran off right as the ball was bounding there on the punt. Yeah. And that was the 12th man. And there was still another extra guy out you there. You know, you would have thought they could have got everybody blocked with 13 of them out there. But, uh, and the officials, obviously, it's their first game of the yeah. season, too. So. Well, and, and, and you want to tell that young man who got off the field right as the ball is landing, you don't want to run off the field right then because that tells the official that you're not supposed to be out there. That's right, Joe. All right, first to 10 here for the Razorbacks. Uh, worst field position of the night starting in their own territory at the 42-yard line. Bishop back to, to pass. Deep. Got time, got some pressure. Got to step up in the pocket. Got a man Overthrow deep. Overthrow him, though. And overthrown there is uh, Blackwell. He, he was running free, Joe. And that's one thing, you know, again, young secondary here for everybody Allo and all, but you tell your, your deep safety, nobody gets behind you. And uh, that time they let Blackwell get way behind him there. So the Razorbacks, you know, Joe, it still serves a purpose. It shows the defensive uh, backs that they can't start creeping up to help with the run. 
Second down and 10 here for the Razorbacks. 4.40 to play here the first quarter. Big cushion here on the right side. Bishop back to pass, setting up the setting screen. Up screen. It's gonna and be it's intercepted. And Joe is a middle screen. Yeah. And it's just a That's number 40 running down the field. And that is <laughs> Darian Crabtree who comes up with a big play. A sharp play there by Crabtree, Joe. He recognized it. He stayed home, and he made the interception. Ray, it's what we talked, you and I talked about before the game. The middle screen is one of the toughest plays offensively to pull off, and you saw it right there. Again, yeah, it only takes one defensive lineman to recognize what's going on, and uh, the problem is you're throwing it into a crowd. Crabtree makes them pay, and the Leopards in business at the 19-yard line of the Razorbacks here with 4.31 to play. See the replay Take here. Take a look here at the replay, Joe. snapped the ball, ran just over the left tackle, and took it all the way to the house. Yeah, it was a wide receiver reverse, and Corbett White <laughs> took it to the house from 19 yards out to pull the Leopards within a point here. So the Leopards saw him to attempt the point after. Oh, it's going to go for the two-point conversion here. And they're gonna not going to get it. That was uh, Aguilar, the kicker, but he didn't get a chance if they went for the two-point conversion. Here's the replay of the touchdown right this here. This is the touchdown the play. You see a little reverse, reverse. Right here. And Corbin White going to take it in from 19 yards out. So, Leopards down by one after the missed two-point conversion. And Joe, Leopards make the uh, Razorbacks pay very quickly for that turnover. They certainly do. So seven to six here, our score with 421 to play in the first quarter. And uh, turnovers, as we thought, Ray, playing a big part here in this first quarter. Uh, the Leopards with two turnovers, the Razorbacks with one turnover, and turnovers uh, have led to all the points so far. And Joe, I, I'm not sure if the Leopards are uh, a little bit worried about their kicking game. Uh, just hard to tell. We've seen a fake punt. We've now seen a fake extra point. Yeah, I, you know, you don't know. I, you know, remember correctly, the, the kicking game was improved last year, I believe. So, and the same kicker from last year. So, maybe just trying some little trick plays here uh, early in the year. Aguilar set to kick it away. A short kick. Going to be taken at the 25-yard line. Oh, said he called for a fair catch. He did raise his hand. And that was uh, Blackwell. I think he raised his hand, kind of lining up the football and didn't realize that the official would see that as a fair catch. Yeah, anytime you get that hand up above the waist there, they're going to take that as a fair catch signal. So the Razorbacks take over at their own 25-yard line, still up 7-6 to six here in the first quarter from Harris Field. And both these teams, first ball game, Trying to get the kinks out here, especially offensively. And turnovers, as we know, always an issue early in the season. Braylon Bishop back on at quarterback. Tory Blair is the tailback. Bishop wanting to throw it there, nowhere to go. Bishop going to get rid of it. And that's almost picked off. Yeah, I think where he threw it, Joe, even if he, the defender had caught it, he couldn't have stayed in bounds with it. 
And that's one thing, you know, the Arkansas high coaches will talk to, to Bishop about the young quarterback, uh, he's a junior, uh, don't force the football. No. In, that, in that situation, just throw it up in the stands. You're yeah. out of the pocket. You're out of the pocket. Get There's rid no, of it. No yeah. grounding. And, uh, and Joe, kind of a lot of times that the quarterbacks, they want – to make a play happen even when there's you know they're strung out there's nowhere to go there's nobody open and you know it's better to take the loss of down stay where you were on the field and go for the next play we're getting a timeout by Arkansas High. come out here four is ten to play in the first quarter seven to six for the Razorbacks what is the Eagle experience for me it's fun I love it. The Eagle experience for me, the sports is great. I made a lot of great friends. It's a big school in a small package. I study business administration. The professors are great. We're very involved in the community. My name is Michael Herrera, and I play baseball at Texas a and Fisher County. My name is Allie, and I'm from Little Elm, Texas. I'm Danny, and I'm a senior at Texas A&M University, Texarkana. If you find yourself in need of emergency care, come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We're locally owned with board certified physicians for all your emergencies. We accept all private insurance. At Texarkana Emergency Center, we have on-site lab, pharmacy, x-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. Real ER without the wait. The next generation of emergency care. Second down and 10 here for the Razorbacks. Bishop Scott is going to roll out to his left. And Bishop is going to lose yardage back to the 20-yard line. Joe, I don't think the Razorbacks have tried more than two running plays, have they? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. Uh, and you've got an outstanding back in there with Tory Blair. I, I would be tempted just to... You know, try to run the ball a little bit and try to open up the passing game with the run. But so far, the Razorbacks have tried a lot more passes than they have run. So third down, 15 now for the Razorbacks. Bishop gets the snap, looking for the, the wide receiver screen. It's over the head of the intended receiver. And that was... Blackwell, the intended receiver, so it's going to bring 13. up a fourth and 15 for the, for the Razorbacks. Razorbacks. And, and Ray, I got to yeah. say, we're probably going to see Sean Forback here pretty quickly for the Razorbacks. Yeah, Joe, I, from what I looked like there, it looked like the receiver ran in like he thought the pass was going to be thrown inside around the hash mark. Quarterback threw to where the receiver first lined up, so that's why it went over his head. He, it went to where he, the place he left from. Again, in the kicking game, you're going to have all these kind of little hiccups, people forgetting that they're on the punt team. Timeout by the Razorbacks because they were running out of time. Great play here in the first quarter. We'll be back after this. Joe, the Razorbacks, uh, actually, this will be the first punting situation for them tonight. And again, just while the Leopards have struggled with those kind of situations, uh, we're not sure that the Razorbacks are, are going to be hitting on all cylinders in that punt game either. Yeah, and again, you know, a lot of times people focus on offense and they focus on defense. And, and a lot of people don't really think about special teams, but special teams are a huge part of the game and uh, if you have trouble punting, you have trouble fielding punts, kicking, uh, fielding kicks, uh, that can really affect the outcome of the game. And it's tough when you, you know, the kids, you work on those starters that are on the punt team and the punt receiving team and then one kid goes out who's on offense or defense and that substitute has to remember to get in there. Kind of a line drive kick going to be taken by Shannon Roy. At his own 45, back to the 40, and runs out of bounds at the 35-yard line of the Razorbacks, a 30-yard return. Joe, yeah, that's a net 10 yards on that. That's about it. 
at the 35 yard line. So while the Razorbacks got the punt off, it was kind of a line drive, and he out kicked his coverage there. And Shannon Roy did a great job there returning the football. So the Leopards here, again, really good field position at the 35 yard line. 3.15 to play here in the first quarter. 7 to 6 uh, score here. We've got a replay here. Actually, fielded at the 37, so we're going to say a 32 yard return for Shannon Roy. First and 10 here for the Leopards. Brown awaits the snap. Hands the football off to number seven, TJ Templeton. Number seven, TJ Templeton on the carry. They gain a few, Joe, about three yards. And number 99. Johnson. Johnson and Flowers on the tackle for the Razorbacks. Second and seven here for the Leopards, who seem to be clicking a little bit better here on offense now. This is kind of that same thing we saw earlier. It's a quarter and wide, a quarter and wide. It's going to score on 32 yards down. Yep, and Joe, the excellent play there by the Leopards. Razorbacks uh, just having a little trouble making those tackles in the open field. Yeah, and that's the play we saw earlier where Corbin White's coming around from his wide receiver spot. He, he fumbled the football, and this time it worked to, to perfection. So, so the Leopards here, after uh, a few little hiccups at the beginning now, are, are starting to really turn the tide of this game. And, Lining up to kick. Now, that they did a fake Same kick again, again, Joe. That's against moving. the rules. He can't be running towards yeah. the line of scrimmage when the ball is snapped. And, and he did that earlier on the earlier two-point attempt. And uh, uh, they didn't call it, but they called it this time. Yeah, you can snap to the up back, but there's the replay of the touchdown run, Joe. A nice block over there on the corner, springing, and a nice cutback by Henderson. But, yeah. You have to wait until the ball is snapped to go forward. And we, we clearly saw Henderson going forward there on that two-point throw. Now, if this was the Canadian Football League, yes. that would be legal. Yes. So, i, I got to think we're going to see an extra point attempt here from the Leopards as uh, Gregorio Aguilar out there to kick it a player coming in now for the leopards and one of them coming off looks like henderson i believe that field. is i believe henderson's been kicked out of the ball game taking his helmet off there was a skirmish there with the razorbacks and if that's the case that's a, that's a big a, weapon a, for the leopards to lose yeah it really is could not get the handle on the ball joe no. The snap was the snap was there, but the holder holder double clutched it and couldn't get it in position for the kick. 12 to 7, our score here, 239 to play. We'll be back after this. Every day, the Texarkana Arkansas School District helps students realize their full potential. We are a community rich in talent and strength, all working together to enhance the lives of our students and committed to providing students the tools they need to succeed. At TASD, you will find state-of-the-art technology, a dedicated staff, and an award-winning approach to education. We know that every student is different, so we think our schools should be too. Become a Razorback and realize your full potential. Your family always comes. 12 to 7, our new scorer here as the Leopards fail to make the extra point but take the lead. Ball's going to be picked up on the 21 yard line by Tory Blair. And Blair going to have a nice return out to the 40 yard line. And that's good. So. 
Yeah, the, uh, well, the Razorbacks get it back at their own 40-yard line, finding themselves trailing here 12 to 7. The Leopard defense, Ray, has done a much better job here. I think so. Uh, after that stop, when the Razorbacks uh, started on their own five-yard line, they made that stop, didn't allow any points. They, the defense for Leopards have, has looked a lot better. They really have, Joe. And, and uh, the Razorbacks caught them flat-footed on that little, uh, that little you know, belly, belly pass over here to the uh, – uh, right flat early in the game and got that touchdown, but since then the Leopard defense has been just stout. All right, so some discussion going on right here. Not sure exactly what it is. It may involve Damian Henderson. Know if we have a timeout on the field or not. There's been no yeah. signal. The New Diallo team gathering up I, around their coach. I believe the referees have asked the coaches to talk to their teams. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Uh, two two point conversion tries that we've seen for the Leopards. At the end of each one of them, there's a little bit of a skirmish going on there. I think uh, the officials are doing some preventative officiating, saying, "Get you know, guys, uh, talk to your players." Tell them we're not going to tolerate that, and, and uh, you know they'll, they'll be tossing guys off the off the field. And, and again, this is a uh, anytime you have two of our local teams playing each other, there's a, a strong rivalry aspect, and it's just imperative that they keep everybody's tempers in check and don't let things start to escalate. So good job by the officials on that. Uh, I think we're ready to go here as the Razorbacks line up first and 10 on their 40 yard line. Leopards up 12 to seven here as Bishop is uh, gonna have the incompletion there. Number Not his fault that time. Patterson, the intended Dish receiver. Yeah, Dishon and Patterson just yeah. couldn't quite bring yeah. it in. Yeah, just hit him right in the hands. And, Good pass that time by uh, Bishop. We've seen some Bishop struggle here in the first quarter, but that time not his fault. Two twenty-four to play here in the first quarter. It seems like it's been a long first quarter. It has going on uh, forty-five minutes here so far in the first quarter. Pass is going to be complete. Excellent job. Beautiful throw and catch. Uh, Sean Forback comes up with a catch for the Razorbacks. Leopards go ahead and bring him down almost immediately, but not before he gets about a 15-yard gain. That was a very nice pass that time for Braylon Bishop. Down Forback across the middle. Forback knew he was going to get hit, took the punishment, got the first down for the Razorbacks. Ball at the 43 of the Leopards, first and 10. Clock runs 2.03 to play here in the first quarter. Bishop back to pass again. Pass is almost picked off at the 32. And Joe, the, the Leopards are, there's, the Leopards, there's three of them around each receiver there. Yeah, and I think that ball was intended for the, the short man in the pattern, and it just fail, sailed over his head because there was nobody there at the 32 except for a Leopard. Second and 10 here for the Razorbacks. Right. Back to pass, pass is caught. Caught, it was behind the intended receiver. It was a nice catch, but because he had to reach back for it, uh, he was not able to advance it any further. It's gonna bring up third and about five, Joe. Jamie Pascal with the catch for the Razorbacks. Third down, the third down coming up here, 135 to play in the first quarter. This part of the field, Joe, I, I gotta believe unless you lose a lot of yards on this play that you go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Uh, I, I think so. Corey Blair, the ball carrier, looked like he's gonna have the first down, but good job of tackling by the Leopards, and that was Number, Number 25, Joe, and that's a tremendous play there. Karen Eaton came from his uh, linebacker spot, Devon Eaton. Kind of looked like he was shot out of a cannon there, Joe. So brings up fourth and two here for the Razorbacks, who definitely going to go for it. And they get, the, they get the Leopards to jump off sides, so they'll pick up the first down. 
And, you know, one of the things I, I never understand, Ray, is if you're a defensive lineman, well, why are you all sides? Because you've got to watch the ball being snapped. I mean, I don't, I don't understand how that happens, but good job there by Bishop with a long count. It, it, it's easier to get them to do it when it's a short yardage situation. They're all fired up to make sure they get in there and penetrate and don't let the offensive line move them. But Razorbacks, uh, a lot of times the team will just plan to not move and, and take a timeout. Razorbacks do not have any timeouts left here in the first half. Pass is incomplete, intended for number two, uh, two or three, I can't number see. Number three, a player. And, uh, you know, the Razorbacks, Ray, surprisingly, have thrown a lot of footballs here in this first quarter. I, I don't know, I don't have it in front of me, but I'd say at least 20 passes here so far in the first quarter. 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Traditionally, Razorbacks have been known as a running team, but they are really throwing the football a lot here in this first quarter. Bishop back to pass. Going to take off and run with it. Got some room, got the first down inside the 10. And he's going to go in for the Razorbacks as Brayden Bishop takes it in from 30 yards out. Joe, the second he, score of the Razorbacks. He just flat out made a couple of people miss and ran through a tackle. Yeah. Good job there by Bishop. Oh, they're going to say he's out of bounds at the five. So no right. touchdown, no touchdown. It's going to be first and goal from the five yard line. Bishop's a good size young man. Junior, 6'1", 186, and uh, uh, he did a good job there just taking off running right here. Didn't have the pass. Breaks the tackle there. Just beautiful, and right there they're saying he stepped on the line. Nasha Taylor able to uh, get him out of bounds at the five. But first and goal at the five for the Razorbacks. We saw this earlier where they had a first and goal and couldn't punch it in. Gonna get to the Bishop's corner, gonna keep it. It's gonna be short. Down to about the one. We're gonna mark him out at the two. It looks like. So it'll be second and goal with a couple of yards to go for the Razorback offense. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was. Uh, I said Taylor earlier pushed him out of bounds. That was Kalen Watson who pushed him out of bounds. And Watson again able to get Bishop out of bounds there. We got an injured Leopard on the field, so we'll take a time out. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. When it comes to priorities, your family always comes first. History has brought you to this point. Generations have led the way. At Red River Credit Union, the tradition continues. Financial options are available for every age, including checking and savings accounts and financial counseling. Members enjoy mobile banking and direct deposit, and children use their Homer accounts at Red River to learn how to save for the future. Red River Credit Union, with locations in Shreveport, Grambling, and now open in Marshall, Texas. What is the Eagle experience? Being involved on campus. I love connecting with all types of people. I play tennis for the Eagles. Um, you're not just a number, you're actually a person. In the mirror. I'm a part of the business club. First year experience mentor. You get to meet your professor, they get to know yes, you personally. I'm Sarah Wilbanks, I'm out. from Atlanta, Texas, and I'm a senior at A&M Texarkana. I'm Shannon from Rockwall, Texas, I'm a senior. My name is Phil, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. That is my Eagle experience. Rebels, the injured player, Trayvon Rebels, injured player for the Leopards. Good to see him coming off under his own power there. Brings up a second and goal from the two yard line for the Razorbacks. Razorbacks down 12 to seven, 24 seconds to play here in the first half, or excuse me, first quarter and no, no timeouts for the Razorbacks. Good job by that defense. They might have gained a yard, but they're not going to get in. And, they're, and the Razorback can't stop the clock. They're going to have to line back up quick, Joe. They're going to have time for one more play. And they better hurry. It's down they to look five like they're seconds. thinking about it. They're not going to get it off here. Joe, that's incredible that they can't, they can't just line up and go. 
Yeah, they didn't get it off there. Oh, but Joe, it's the quarter, not the half. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's true. We're thinking it's the half. Here, Never yeah. mind, folks. It has been a long time tonight, <laughs> it, but it's still it the end of the first that's quarter. That's exactly right. So it'll be third and goal for the Razorbacks. Our mistake there. It is our first game of the season as well. So at the end of the first quarter here, uh, the Razorbacks trail 12 to 7, but knocking on the door. We'll take a break and we'll be back after this. What is the Eagle experience? Being involved on campus. I love connecting with all types of people. I play tennis for the Eagles. Um, you're not just a number, you're actually a person. In the mirror. I'm a part of the business club. I'm a first year experience mentor. You get to meet your professor, they get to know you personally. I'm Sarah Wilbanks, I'm from Atlanta, Texas, and I'm a senior at A&M Texarkana. I'm Shannon from Rockwall, Texas, I'm a senior. My name is Phil, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. That is my Eagle experience. At Liberty Allo High School, a variety of opportunities exist to teach students how to be productive members of society. Dual credit college courses ensure that LEHS graduates have a head start on their continuing education. Extensive career and technical education offerings give students job-ready skills to compete in a shrinking job market. Extracurricular activities, including band, academic UIL, and theater, allow students to display outstanding artistic skills. And as always, LEHS athletic teams are among the top in the state. Liberty Isle High School truly is a great place for students and educators. If you find yourself in need of emergency care, come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. We're open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We're locally owned with board certified physicians for all your emergencies. We accept all private insurance. At Texarkana Emergency Center, we have on-site lab, pharmacy, x-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. Real ER without the wait. The next generation of emergency care. Back here at Harris Field as we get ready to start the second quarter. And uh, Ray, we were talking about 52 minutes for the first quarter, which we, we thought there was a half because it was so long there. But we're now in the second quarter. And the Razorbacks with a third down and goal at the one yard line. And Ray, I got to think that Braylon Bishop here is going to keep it himself. Joe, they, they got a yard and a half on the previous play. And give it to Torrey Blair. He's in. And Blair's going to get in for the touchdown. Number three, Blair on the carry touchdown Razorback. Look at that left side. They loaded up that left side. They had a couple of big bodies there at the fullback spot and at the tight end spot. Able to get, in there, get him in there for the touchdown. So the Razorbacks will regain the lead here, 13-12 as we're just underway here in the second quarter. There's a replay right here. You see Bishop helping his running back get in the end zone there. And Christian Stewart on to attempt the extra point here for the Razorbacks. Low snap, good job by the holder. Kick is up and it is good. 14 to 12, our new score here. We'll be back after this. What's so special about credit unions? You! What's so special about Millway? You! At Millway, you'll find it's comfortable to talk to us about your money and your financial goals. You'll see that we're truly concerned about helping you reach your goals. It's about lower loan rates, fewer fees, and higher returns on your savings. It's, it's all about taking care of you, the member, and helping you with your financial needs. Our goal is to make your life more affordable and enjoyable for you and your family. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy. I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orshovy.com. The new or pre-check tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orshovy.com or pre-check. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to Or Chevy. We're buying a car is easy. Surf or Chevy. 14 to 12, our new scorer here at Harris Field. As he... There you see the cheerleaders for the Leopards. Their team down two points in a tight ball game. And the uh, Razorback offense gets rolling again there. Going up 14 to 12. Still got a, an injured player down for the Leopards. Looks like they're going to bring out the stretcher for that player. So. As they attend to that player, let's uh, take another time out here. We'll be back to hear us feel right after this.
Corey, the injured leopard coming off the field here. So hope he's uh, going to be okay, be able to get back in the ball game. He's a big part of that leopard team. Don't know if that's a if that's a, a stinger, or a back, or something like that, Joe. He's he's walking, but they're definitely having to hold help hold him up. So the Razorbacks regain the lead here, 14 to 12, with 11:56 to play in the first half, and the Razorbacks will be set to kick it away here. The Razorbacks, as we mentioned, no timeouts left here. And they used them all in the first quarter, uh, so. We'll see uh, how things play out here now. Well, and, and we got to say, Damien Henderson was not kicked out of the ball game. He's back in there on the kickoff return team here. So, kicking team down at the 13-yard uh, line. So, apparently just removed for one play. And they, they didn't make him come off. Oh, so. That's going to be. The ball gets past him. Anderson's going to have to pick it up at the two yard line. Makes some people miss, and now he's got some room. And I think he stepped out at about the 26, Joe. Yeah, and there's going to be a late hit by the kicker. Number 81. You know, the kicker always wants to get in on the tackle, and a good job over there by the kicker, but uh, kind of hit him in the field of play. We'll see coming up right here. And he makes the two people miss, and then suddenly. He's got some room, and there's where he stepped out, and the kicker, actually, yeah, the kicker got him out of bounds a yard or two. Not sure if the kicker didn't get blocked into him, too. Yeah, he may have, but uh, nevertheless, it'll be a 15-yard penalty against the Razorbacks. I think, well, no. Apparently, they uh, picked up the flag, and that may have been the case, right? No, 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 there. Call it. Yeah, there it is. That was, that was right in front of the Liberty Alabama bench. Typically, when you have something like that right in front of the bench. Somebody's going to say something. Yeah, it's going to get called. People will go crazy when they see that happen right there in front of their bench. So the Leopards, after the 15-yard penalty, start with good field position at their own 43-yard line. About 14 to 12 here in Harris Field, the campus of Liberty Alo High School. Man in motion, make it to White. Damian Henderson will be the ball carrier. Henderson. It out. No place to go, Joey. Get any yards. Yeah, gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that's about it. Good job by that Razorback defense. Great pursuit over there, Henderson. Thought he was going to be able to get the corner, but just couldn't get there. And they'll say no gain on the play. Second down and 10 here no gain on the play. for the Razorbacks. Brown got the snaps, got some pursuit, trying to run out of it, and he's going to fumble the football. Looked like he was trying to throw it, Joe, but you, if you, yeah. It has to be convincing that you were trying to throw it. If they think you There's a scramble over there for it. Major Taylor, one of the first ones over there. I think the Leopards got it back. Yeah, no signal. No, the oh, Razorbacks Razor got it. Have it. Major Taylor, one of the first ones over there. I'm not sure he came up with it, but there was a tremendous pile. The other thing is, were they going to get it inbounds? And uh, yeah, that's Taylor who comes up with it. They do have to recover it inbounds, and if part of his body was already out of bounds, uh, it would just remain the Leopards' ball. So the third turnover here in the first half for the Leopards, and the Razorbacks with good starting field position again here at the 42-yard line. I'm going to say the average, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to say the average starting field position for the Razorbacks is probably been about the 20, 25 yard line of the Leopards here in the first half. Bishop back to pass, looking downfield, he's got a man wide open, the pass is gonna be complete at the 10 yard line. And still on his feet. And that is Taufri 
Green. They might get him to the end zone. And they Green did, in so. for the touchdown. Green <laughs> called it at the five and would not be denied the well, touchdown. They, they ended up in that big pile, and enough players came and moved that pile all the way into the end zone. Good job over there by Braylon Bishop. Buying himself time, and Green got open and uh, caught it at the five, and the herd of Liberty uh, uh, Razorbacks got him into the end zone. We'll see here the replay. And you're gonna see Bishop here, he's gonna roll out to his right, he's gonna buy himself some time. It's they pressure. Contain on him. Stays behind the line of scrimmage to keep uh, the pass. Oh, he caught it at the 10. Illegal. Caught him at the 10. He fights his way to about the five, and then here comes some more people. Number three there for the Razorbacks. And so the Razorbacks get it into the end zone. Got another injured leopard coming off the field here. That is. Seven, looks like. Okay, Vontae Featherston. Looks like either a knee or an ankle. So I hope he's going to be okay as well. The green wouldn't be denied there. Got help from his teammates and got it into the end zone. So the Razorbacks back on the scoreboard here. Up now 20 to 12. As Christian Stewart is on to attempt the extra point. Twenty-one to twelve, our new score here. Ten forty-five to play. Back after this. Every day, the Texarkana, Arkansas School District helps students realize their full potential. We are a community rich in talent and strength, all working together to enhance the lives of our students and committed to providing students the tools they need to succeed. At TASD, you will find state-of-the-art technology, a dedicated staff, and an award-winning approach to education. We know that every student is different, so we think our schools should be too. Become a Razorback and realize your full potential. 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams, it was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected. But his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're going to go back out and play the second half because we've only played the first half. I'm Craig Jenkins, pastor at Beach Street. Maybe you've been running the wrong direction. Let me say this to you. It's only the first half. There's still a second half to go. You've got an opportunity to make a change and a new direction in your life. I'd like to invite you to Beach Street this Sunday at 815 or 1045. In one of those services, you're going to be encouraged to go in a different direction. I look forward to seeing you there. Twenty-one to twelve, our new scorer here at Harris Field, as the Razorback offense back on the scoreboard. Short set to kick it away. Short kick, nobody there. And he picked up at the twenty-three yard line and returned to the thirty-nine yard line. Good field position for the Leopard offense. That was Aiden Alexander. Really almost first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. All right, so the 39-yard line, the starting point here for that Leopard offense. Find themselves down 21 to 12 here, 10-39 to play in the first half. And that Razorback offense has uh, put together a couple of good drives here, obviously starting with great field position. They have, Joe, and they've made a couple of just key plays there. That long pass and then just the refusal of the receiver to go down and the teammates coming and helping kind of push the pile all the way into the end zone. Brown awaits the snap, hands it off. And that is T.J. Templeton, the ball carrier. It's going to gain two or so. Number 25, Logan Williams, and number 46. Charles Stewart. Williams and Stewart on the tackle for the Razorbacks. Second down and eight now. 
for the Leopards. And again, nowhere to go this time for Timbledon. Leopards, need, Leopards have not run a counter play since that uh, first little wide receiver reverse. And the Razorbacks are being freely allowed to, to pursue out there, you know, and they are over pursuing, but they're not being penalized for it. You see here, okay, this is a uh, replay for, of the touchdown. Yeah, this is from the last touchdown by the Razorbacks here. Back to live action. And pass is going to be incomplete. Tended for Malik Watson. Four defensive backs back there with those two receivers, Joe. And Brown was kind of running for his life right there. Had to throw off his back foot. Couldn't get anything on it. So it'll be fourth down now at 11 here for the Leopards. And two or three players have gone out. The Leopards got to make sure they got enough people on the field. They're missing the entire Three left side of their line. All right, now they're getting a the player on here. Better hurry down to five seconds on the play clock. They didn't get it off. And it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've that already seen that one snap over the head of the punter. So, it'll back them up five yards here. It'll be more than 16 now for the Leopards. Ball will be back on the 33-yard line. Good snap this time. That ball and is blocked. And we'll roll to the 48-yard line. But, Ray, I, before it ever got blocked, I thought he's holding on to that football way yeah. too long. Yeah, again, the kicking game, the punting game, the kicking game definitely are, are a real work in progress here. Not sure who got that. I don't know if we have a replay. Several Razorbacks in there close to the punter, but you've got to get that thing off very, very quickly and held on to it just a fraction too long. So three turnovers and a block punt so far for the Leopards here in this first half. It's been, been a pretty sloppy half here really for both teams. And what we oftentimes expect in the first ball game of the season. Hand off to Blair. Blair's going to run out of bounds at about the 41 yard line. Push out of bounds by number 25, Rod Eaton. He'll pick up uh, seven. Second and three for the Razorbacks. We'll be second down and three here with 9.07 to play in the first half. Razorbacks up 21 to 12. Off the 41 of the Leopards. Bishop back to pass. Plenty Got of time. time. Got a man there and overthrows, overthrows him. a little bit. That was Bishop Blackwell. Joe, the offensive uh, line for the Razorbacks is doing a pretty good job that time of providing protection. Yeah. yeah. I think that was one of the concerns coming in was the, the offensive line, but so, so far tonight they've done a nice job. There have been times where, where Bishop's had to scramble, but he's done a nice job of it. The third down three here for the Razorbacks. Oh, okay, well, there's a penalty. Didn't see the flag. No, I never did see the flag. So it's gotta be a be hold. Instead of third and three, it will be second and 13. Well, we were just bragging on the offensive line for doing a good job with protection. So Now we know why. Yeah, that's exactly right. 
And it, you know, if you don't get caught, great job. Yeah, it's uh, if you ever grab, you know, if they see the jersey get pulled and extend, or if they see your arm around the guy and he's already past the point where you should be able to keep him under control. A little reverse here. Had a little trouble getting Blair. the handle on it. And Blair's going to be dropped for a loss. And that is Shannon Roy who makes the tackle. Good to see Roy back in the ball game. Also, Warren Gar in there on the tackle. They'll be third and long here. Third and about 15 for the Razorbacks. Two back set here. Bishop's got the ball and again overthrown. And that's going to be a flag. Necessary roughness. Yeah. The ball clearly overthrown there. Yeah. And if you're the defensive back, you have got to let not let that happen. You got to yeah. ease up. The collision itself wouldn't necessarily be the penalty, but there was obvious, you know, I mean, he, he lowered the head into him. Yeah. And, it's, and it was obviously well overthrown. Yeah. And as a defensive back, you have to be aware of that. The result of the penalty is an automatic first down for the Razorbacks. So the Razorbacks get the first down by penalty. So the Leopards again self-inflicted injuries here with uh, turnovers, block punt, and, and now a, uh, a unnecessary roughness on a third and 15. And you cannot give teams no. extra downs like that. You know, you're gonna you're looking at fourth and fifteen, and and uh, have them punting. Now they've got a first down. Back to passes. Bishop pass is going to be incomplete. Tended over there for Blackwell. We second down here and 10 for the Razorbacks. I can't remember in recent history the Razorbacks throwing the football like this, Ray. No, Joe, they're throwing uh, three out of four plays or four out of five. Bishop's going to roll out to his left and pass intended over there for Bishop's Taylor and only four seconds go off the clock on that play. Depending on the play is number five, Kevin Watson. 7.58 left in the first half, pass. Joe. The third and 10 now for the Razorbacks. You got to think the Razorbacks going to throw it, where they've had a lot of success here in this first half. Screen pass. Screen pass. That it's broken hits up. the ground, but almost intercepted again. Jared. Yeah, number 58, 58 almost got that. That was Oren Gar stepped in the way he actually yeah he actually reached out and, and hit it he just couldn't quite catch it so that leopard defense this time comes up with a uh, stop on third down deep for the leopards, shannon roy, shannon roy will, will be back deep for the leopards sean Forback will be the punter for the razorbacks Flag down. That's going to go into the end zone. So that will wait on the flag. It'll work out for the Leopards to see who the flag's against. Got to think it's against the Razorbacks. If I'm the Leopards, I might just decline that. Yeah. Take it at the 20. I think so. You don't want to take the chance of them.
pinning you inside the 10 or uh, you yeah. know you fumble it or something so inside you've the got the ball you've 10. got it on your 20 7.45 left in the first half yeah it's against the Razorback so ball start against the Razorback let's see yeah okay Leopards are going to decline it so the, the uh, Leopards will take over at their own 20 yard line although they're well, they haven't placed the ball yet. And there is no ball on the field. <laughs> well, the yeah. uh, team that's on offense is supposed to provide the ball. All right. They, oh, okay, now they got the ball. They're actually going to start at the 25. So they assess the penalty in addition to going into the end zone on the, uh, on the kick. So they get it at the 25. So really they didn't decline it. Good move there by uh, Henderson. And Henderson's going to be run out he of bounds. He stepped out at about the 39-yard line. Well, they're going to say the 48-yard line. Corey Blair able to get him out of bounds at the 40 eight yard line of the Razorbacks. Nice run there by Henderson. Made a couple guys miss him at the line of scrimmage. And Leopards right back on the line of scrimmage. They're not huddling up. Little screen pass is dropped. dropped. And that's uh, Watson, the intended Rose receiver. Pass, incomplete. The intended receiver was number eight, Malik Watson. We're going to second 10 for the 7.30 to play here in the first half. 21-12 for the Razorbacks. The second down at 10 here at the 48 of the Razorbacks. Leopards trail 21-12. Brown's got the ball, going to be hit very hard to 45 yard line. And Joe, somebody has stopped the there it goes. stopped for a second. Now it's running. I think the clock operator forgot that there were plays where the clock didn't have to stop. <laughs> Flowers at the tackle. Third down at seven for the Leopards. Passes incomplete as Brown again running for his life there. Pressure coming for the Razorbacks from Jacoby Hall. So it'll be fourth down seven now. And it appears the Leopards are going to punt it here. Zeke Brown deep to punt to number three. Corey Blair. Leverage taking a timeout here. Seven minutes to play in the first half. We're back after this. When it comes to priorities, your family always comes first. History has brought you to this point. Generations have led the way. At Red River Credit Union, the tradition continues. Financial options are available for every age, including checking and savings accounts and financial counseling. Members enjoy mobile banking and direct deposit, and children use their Homer accounts at Red River to learn how to save for the future. Red River Credit Union, with locations in Shreveport, Grambling, and now open in Marshall, Texas. What's so special about Credit Union? You! What's so special about Millway? You! At Millway, you'll find it's comfortable to talk to us about your money and your financial goals. You'll see that we're truly concerned about helping you reach your goals. It's about lower loan rates, fewer fees, and higher returns on your savings. It's, it's all, all about taking care of you, the member, and helping you with your financial needs. Our goal is to make your life more affordable and enjoyable for you and your family.
Damian Henderson with the fake here and not going to make it as Jamarius Johnson is going to force him out of bounds short of the first down marker. He made eight yards, but he needed 10. Or excuse me, he made six yards, but he needed eight, I guess. So it comes up short anyway. And so the Razorbacks will take over first and 10 at their own 43 yard line. And again, that's the third or fourth play trick kind of play we've seen on special teams. And Joe, you know, in general, those kind of things might work one time, but if you keep doing it, uh, the whole trick aspect just goes away. Well, we've seen two two point conversion tries. Uh, we've seen two fake punts. two fake punts, so that's four. So yeah, uh, usually, like you said, uh, one time a game is about all you see. Bishop back to pass. Pass is complete at the 48. Tory Blair. A completed pass moves the ball six yards, and the clock continues to run down to 6:36 in the half now. That's a nice job by Blair. Ball was thrown low, had to go down and get it, and able to do so. At this moment, he might be my player of the game for catching the ball. <laughs> Second down, now four for the Razorbacks. Nothing doing this time on the running play. Number 13, Forback on the carry. Sean Forback, the ball carrier, going to lose yardage. Back to the, let's say, I don't know where they're going to mark him here. Looks like the 47. They lost a couple of yards. Crabtree on the tackle for the Leopards. Going to bring up a third down and, let's see. Third six here, third and seven. Looks like third six for the Razorbacks. But they're gonna pass it right here. Yeah, I'm figuring they will. It is completed. Blair gets it. Blair is uh, gonna be dropped short of the first down Mission marker. Pass complete to Blair. At the 48 of the Leopards. Taking down by number 16, Colin Hampton. Hampton on the tackle. It'll be fourth down and short here. Looks like the Razorbacks intend to go for it. I think the Razorbacks feel like they can get the Leopards to jump off sides, Joe. Yeah, we saw that earlier. And if you're the defensive coaches for the Leopards, you got to say, do not jump off sides right here. Got to tell them. But the Razorbacks will have to snap the ball. They can't just let the time run out. Yep, there they, they go again. Joe and, uh, is same player that jumped off sides earlier does it again. Uh, you know the coaches told them. They did tell them, Joe. Yeah, it, as you mentioned earlier, you know, it's tough. you got to shorten a, a uh, yard or so to go. And adrenaline is pumping. You're trying to trying to get in there. And, but again, if you're a defensive lineman, you got to watch the football. Um, Really no excuse there. Another first down by penalty for the Razorbacks. Bishop back to pass. And it's going to be complete to Tylee Green. To number four Green. Taken down by number 27. Dante Featherston. Featherston on the tackle, but a nice pickup there on first down for the Razorbacks. And here's a replay. He's forced out of bounds. Well, penalties. Maybe a penalty against the Razorbacks. So instead of second and three, we're looking second at and second eight. and eight now. 427 to play here in the first half, 21 to 12. The lead for the Razorbacks. Hey, 
Blair gets the handoff. Not much. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Blair on the carry. He's taken down by Gamble. And uh, Joshua Gamble, first man there for the Leopards. They gave him the line of scrimmage. So third down and eight here for the Razorbacks. Inside of four minutes to play here in the first half. Tory Blair still in there tailback. Bishop gets the snap, back to pass. Oh, another flag, gonna be another false start against the Razorbacks. Gonna bring up third and 13. Instead of third, 13 for the Razorbacks. Razorbacks have been hurt by penalties on this drive. Find themselves in third and 13 here. Bishop back to pass, got time, going down the field. He's got a man there, and it is caught. No, it's intercepted. It's going to be intercepted. It was a, a, a basically a fight between the two. They both had the ball, but the Leopards were able to pull away with it. Yeah, it was, it was a jump ball there, and, and uh, Keontae Featherstone, I believe, came up with it. Let's see here. Great coverage down there, and it really was just a fight for the ball. No, that's uh, yeah, Samaj Rose interception. who came up with it. And, Joe, that's a great interception. He was on that ball all the way. The receiver tried to pull it away from him, but he had it all the way. Uh, so that was Samaj Rose who came up with the interception. Second turnover here in the first half for the Razorbacks. One interception and one, or two, excuse me, two interceptions now for the Razorbacks. So first down for the Leopards at their own three yard line. And the football off to Henderson. Henderson loses a yard. You've got to be careful, Joe. They could end up uh, in a safety situation here. Yeah. Joe, we haven't seen anything like a quarterback sneak. We haven't seen uh, no receivers running across the intermediate level of the field, no crossing patterns by either team. No. Uh, they're either in the flat or deep down the field. Kalen Harris made the tackle second down and 12 now for the Leopards. Again, the handoff here. It's going to break it back as Henderson. Henderson's going to have the first down and more. Gets knocked out of bounds in the 17-yard line. And great job there by Henderson. Didn't see anything in the hole. Cut it back to his right. Picked up the first down. You know, but, Ray, we've talked about this before in previous seasons. The fact that when you're in the spread, and we'll see here on the replay, great job by Henderson here. Cuts it back outside. Nothing there in the hole. But when you're in the spread and you don't take snaps under center, those short yardage situations are the yeah, situations you're where you're back in the end zone. Four yards, five yards away from the line Exactly. Of and Corbin White going to be the ball carrier here. It's going to be closed line yeah. this time at the 18 yard line the by Jamarius Johnson. Picks up a yard, maybe. But you would think, though, that coaches would practice going under center occasionally just, just for those situations. Joe, where they've stopped the clock, and I don't know why. It was a running play, he was tackled inbounds. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Good move by Henderson again. Cuts it back inside. Henderson on the carry. On the second down carry. Down number 25. Logan Williams in number 30. So we're going to bring up a third down and five here with two minutes to play in the first half. Again, no huddle here by the Leopard offense. Back to pass here is Brown and off the hands of the intended receiver. Would have been close to the first down marker. That was intended over there for DK Smith. Maybe the play was number 30. 
I'm sorry, Wafer, that's who it was intended for. So bring, uh, bring up a fourth down at five now. And uh, we will, I think we've seen one punt out of the Leopards here in the first half. Yes. Two, two fake punts, one real punt. And I don't think you fake punt it right here. No, I don't think so either, Joe. But we've also seen two snaps over the head. But one of them, there was a penalty just as the ball was snapped. And it's, it's high, but he catches it. I don't know. He took a long time, then gets it kind of a shank off yeah. the side of his foot. Gets a good bounce, though. Yeah. Going to end up being a, a pretty decent punt. Going to be stopped on the 47. It'll be a 25-yard punt. But again, we saw Brown really wait there to punt the football. Uh, you know, it didn't it didn't work out earlier when he got it blocked. So I, I got to think you tell the young man, you know, you, you got to punt that thing away quickly. Yeah. So the Razorbacks get it back here, 135 to play in the first half at the Leopards 47 yard line. Razorbacks with no timeouts. And I would expect that uh, the Razorbacks gonna air it out right here. Bishop awaits the snap. Again, what we haven't seen out of either team is a crossing pattern. Player gonna carry it down to the 40 two-yard line, picks up five. Second down here, Bishop awaits the snap. Bishop back to pass, pass is gonna be complete. Inside the 35, they're gonna be get him down. down. Yeah, getting down about the 35. That's Tavry Green. The clock should restart as soon as the chains are moved, Joe. Tavry Green comes up with the reception. So first and ten at the 35 for the Razorbacks. Official winds the clock. Blair going to be the ball carrier again. Going to be stacked up after a couple of yards. A couple. Yeah. Razorbacks got to get to the line of scrimmage quickly here, down to 45 seconds. They do not have any timeouts. Back to pass is Bishop and dropped by Green, had his hands on it in the corner of the end zone, defended over there by Kalen Watson. And what I liked there, Joe, was the quick release. Yeah. He got the ball, he got the ball, he found his receiver, he stepped in, he threw it. Uh, you know, that really negates the pass rush if you get rid of it in just a second or two. Here's the A&M Texarkana replay. Nicely thrown ball here and uh, Green had a step on the defender, just couldn't haul it in. Does stop the clock here with 23 seconds left in the half. Third down and seven now for the Razorbacks. Play clock's down to five seconds. Back to pass, setting up the screen pass. It is complete. Got a couple of blockers and in front. got the first down there is Blackwell. Gets out of bounds with 15 Blackwell. seconds left. Rose. Rose gets him out of bounds, but not before a big first down by the Razorbacks. And this time the clock will not start until the ball is snapped since he did get out of bounds. It's going to be first and 10 at the 19 yard line of the Leopards. Back to pass, going to the end zone, well and covered, it is and broken up. Intercepted. No, it just, he dropped it. That's Rose on the coverage. That ball floated just a little bit. Had it been a, a little bit tighter there, uh, I think uh, Razorback would have gotten it. Had him open for a brief moment. We'll see right here. Uh, yeah, you see that it kind of floats it. And yeah, a little, uh, little short. Yeah. Intended over there for Tavry Green. So nine seconds left, second down and 10 for the Razorbacks at the 19 of the Leopards. And 
and the Leopards going to take their final time out here. We'll take one as well. High School, a variety of opportunities exist to teach students how to be productive members of society. Dual credit college courses ensure that LEHS graduates have a head start on their continuing education. Extensive career and technical education offerings give students job ready skills to compete in a shrinking job market. Extracurricular activities, including band, academic UIL, and theater, allow students to display outstanding artistic skills. And as always, LEHS athletic teams are among the top in the state. Liberty Isle High School truly is a great place for students and educators. Nine seconds left here in the first half. Razorbacks for the second down and 10 at the 19 of the Leopards. Leopard defense here needs to come up big. They're already down 21-12. And it, it, this would be a big stand for the Leopard defense if they can keep the Razorbacks out of the end zone right here. Tell you what, uh, Razorbacks, they're just uh, up against the clock now, though. They've got time for two plays if one of them's an incomplete pass. Pass is it. complete He's and get, gets to the end zone. Touchdown for the Razorbacks. And that Green, is Tavery Green gets into the end zone. So we'll see here on the replay. Uh, they didn't need but eight seconds to get into the end zone. Green's going to get it right here and make his way into the end zone. So the Razorbacks back on the scoreboard here with one second to play in the first half, up 27 to 12. Stewart, Christian Stewart on to attempt the extra point for the Razorbacks. Good snap, kick is up. 28 to 12, our new scorer. We'll be back right after this. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy, I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orchevy.com. The new or pre-check tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orchevy.com or pre-check. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to or Chevy, where buying a car is easy. Surf or Chevy. 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams, it was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected, but his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're going to go back out and play the second half because we've only played the first half. I'm Craig Jenkins, pastor at Beach Street. Maybe you've been running the wrong direction. Let me say this to you. It's only the first half. There's still a second half to go. You've got an opportunity to make a change and a new direction in your life. I'd like to invite you to Beach Street this Sunday at 815 or 1045. In one of those services, you're going to be encouraged to go in a different direction. I look forward to seeing you there. Razorbacks kicking off. I would not be surprised to see an onside kick right here. Just one second left. You want the clock There it running. is. Oh, and a nice hop, and the Razorbacks may get it, and they do, but the clock's going to run out. That's just fine. So that'll bring us to halftime with the Razorbacks, the visiting team here up 28 to 12 here at Harris Field in Liberty Island. We'll be back after these messages. What is the Eagle experience for me? It's fun. I love it. The Eagle experience for me, the sports is great. I made a lot of great friends. It's a big school in a small package. I study business administration. Professors are great. We're very involved in the community. My name is Michael Herrera, and I play baseball at Texas A&M Fisher County. My name is Allie, and I'm from Little Elm, Texas. I'm Danny, and I'm a senior at Texas A&M University, Texarkana. 
If you find yourself in need of emergency care, come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We are locally owned with board certified physicians for all your emergencies. We accept all private insurance. At Texarkana Emergency Center, we have on-site lab, pharmacy, x-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. Real ER without the wait. The next generation of emergency care. Every day, the Texarkana Arkansas School District helps students realize their full potential. We are a community rich in talent and strength, all working together to enhance the lives of our students and committed to providing students the tools they need to succeed. At TASD, you will find state-of-the-art technology, a dedicated staff, and an award-winning approach to education. We know that every student is different, so we think our schools should be too. Become a Razorback and realize your full potential. Back here at halftime at Harris Field as the Razorbacks of Arkansas High lead the Liberty Allo Leopards 28 to 12 here at the half as we are getting set for the halftime performance. As the Arkansas High Razorback marching band takes the field first here, uh, joined by the Arkansas High Red Line dance team. KLFI TV would like to welcome you to the best in sight and sound in Texarkana Friday nights. This is the University of Arkansas Hope Texarkana Halftime Show.
Riverside High School is proud to present the Razorback Band. This year's marching band will present the hits of the great rock jazz band Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Tonight's performance will include Lucretia McEvil and God Bless the Child. Black captains are Warren Paxton and Grayson Aiken. The band is under the direction of senior drum majors Kyra Tyas and Cody Wayne. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Arkansas High School Razorback Band.
Arkansas High School Razorback Band. Okay, Razorback Band, on your feet for the Razorback Fight Song. Your family always comes first. History has brought you to this point. Generations have led the way. At Red River Credit Union, the tradition continues. Financial options are available for every age, including checking and savings accounts and financial counseling. Members enjoy mobile banking and direct deposit, and children use their Homer accounts at Red River to learn how to save for the future. Red River Credit Union, with locations in Shreveport, Grambling, and now open in Marshall, Texas. What is the Eagle experience? Being involved on campus. I love connecting with all types of people. I play tennis for the Eagles. Um, you're not just a number, you're actually a person. In the mirror. I'm a part of the business club. I'm a first year experience mentor. You get to meet your professor, they get to know you personally. I'm Sarah Wilbanks, I'm from Atlanta, Texas, and I'm a senior at A&M Texarkana. I'm Shannon from Rockwall, Texas, I'm a senior. My name is Phil, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana. That is my Eagle experience. At Liberty Allo High School, a variety of opportunities exist to teach students how to be productive members of society. Dual credit college courses ensure that LEHS graduates have a head start on their continuing education. Extensive career and technical education offerings give students job-ready skills to compete in a shrinking job market. Extracurricular activities, including band, academic UIL, and theater, allow students to display outstanding artistic skills. And as always, LEHS athletic teams are among the top in the state. Liberty Isle High School truly is a great place for students and educators.
Liberty Auto ISD is proud to present. Under the direction of Stephanie Nelson, and under the field command of drum majors Crystal Tovar, Cousin A. Walker, and Johnny Peavy, our 2019 production, Peace. Drum major, is your band ready for performance? 
If you find yourself in need of emergency care, come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. We're open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We are locally owned with board certified physicians for all your emergencies. We accept all private insurance. At Texarkana Emergency Center, we have on-site lab, pharmacy, x-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. Real ER without the wait. The next generation of emergency care. What's so special about credit union? You! What's so special about Millway? You! At Millway, you'll find it comfortable to talk to us about your money and your financial goals. You'll see that we're truly concerned about helping you reach your goals. It's about lower loan rates, fewer fees, and higher returns on your savings. It's, it's all about taking care of you, the member, and helping you with your financial needs. Our goal is to make your life more affordable and enjoyable for you and your family. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy. I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orchevy.com. The new Or PreCheck tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orchevy.com or PreCheck. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to Or Chevy, where buying a car is easy. Surf orchevy.com! Every day, the Texarkana Arkansas School District helps students realize their full potential. We are a community rich in talent and strength, all working together to enhance the lives of our students and committed to providing students the tools they need to succeed. At TASD, you will find state-of-the-art technology, a dedicated staff, and an award-winning approach to education. We know that every student is different, so we think our schools should be too. Become a Razorback and realize your full potential. 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams, it was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected. But his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're gonna go back out and play the second half because we've only played the first half. I'm Craig Jenkins, pastor at Beach Street. Maybe you've been running the wrong direction. Let me say this to you, it's only the first half. There's still a second half to go. You've got an opportunity to make a change and a new direction in your life. I'd like to invite you to Beach Street this Sunday at 815 or 1045. In one of those services, you're gonna be encouraged to go in a different direction. I look forward to seeing you there. You know, we've got some stats here from the halftime while we're waiting for the teams to come back out here. You know, Arkansas High is been fairly dominant on the scoreboard, but if you look at the stats, you'll be able to see why. Yeah, the first downs close there, Arkansas High, 9 to 6 over LE. Rushing yardage, 58 for Arkansas High, 113 for LE. Passing yardage for Arkansas High, 124. And a, and a big stat here, minus six yards passing for LE. LE has only completed one pass, and it was for a six yard loss. And uh, out of, that's out of six attempts, Arkansas High, 10 out of 24. So that's a good thing for the LE defense there. That's keeping them in the game right now. The LE had five uh, fumbles, lost four of them in the first half. Five penalties for Arkansas High, six for LE, uh, and uh, three punts for LE, one punt for Arkansas High. Uh, it was 28 to 12, but uh, the big staff there, four 
fumbles in the first half of the LE. And uh, you know, you're not going to win many ball games when you're, when you're putting the ball on the ground. That's true. And one thing that's not reflected in those, in what you would call the traditional setup for stats, Liberty Island had two fake punts, one of which worked, one of which didn't. And they had two fake extra point attempts. Uh, neither of which worked, which is why they have 12 points. And they had a blocked punt. In the right. first half. So, uh, you know, a lot of trick plays there for, for Liberty Allo. Uh, not many of them working. Uh, and again, you know, first one getters work out the kick. Uh, difficult first half here uh, for Liberty Allo. Arkansas kind of got his offense going there in, in, the, in the second quarter. Uh, you know, puts the points on the board. Uh, they're really well at the half. There's a Razorbacks coming on. I see the Leopards coming on the field. Razorbacks already out on the field. Here as we get ready to start the second half. And the Leopards received the ball at the start of the game, so the Razorbacks should be receiving the ball here at the start of the second half. And, it, and if you were with us, you remember the opening kickoff fumbled by the Leopards. Razorbacks got the ball around the 20 something yard line and punched it in from 21 yards out for the first score. That's absolutely right, Joe. For those of you who may not be from the area, watching us perhaps on the internet, uh, which you can watch our shows all over the world, uh, the Leopards, the home team, are wearing the dark green jerseys with white helmets. The Razorbacks are wearing the white uniforms with the maroon red helmets. Leopards are on the near side of the field. And we also want to tell our fans, uh, new this year at KLFI TV, uh, we have an app, the KLFI TV app, uh, Roku TV, Apple TV. You can go to Google Play, you can go to Android, you can download the KLFI app and, and see all of our uh, sports programs, all of our local programs, the things that are uh, produced by KLFI TV. But Joe, that's an important fact because we may have people from Texarkana that are in far flung corners of the earth. People who may be serving in the military or just moved away due to work and uh, circumstances in their life, but now they can at least uh, keep in touch with the local home area through KLFI. Aguilar kicking off for the Leopards, bounds at 25 pick up. And that's a guy, Ray, that I would not want to be kicking the football to. If Tory Blair gets his hands on the football, he could take it all the way. Joe, you know, one thing we discuss every year is the fact that uh, in high school football, the, the amount of returns that come back in you know, 30 or 40 yards, uh, there have been studies done and factually proven that uh, many, many teams who've worked on their onside kicks and actually uh, maybe mathematically better to onside kick every single time at the high school level. One such team in the state of Arkansas is Pulaski Academy. They make an onside kick, I think, almost every single time. Blair on the carry. Blair on the carry for the Razorbacks. Punched it down inside the 45 to about the 43 yard line. We're talking about Pulaski Academy, they're always one of the best teams on the state of Arkansas. And, and Ray, they, you know, they, an onside kick and they'll recover four or five or six a game and if you score onside kick get it back score again all of a sudden the team finds themselves down 21 or 28 points it's tough to come back it's true joe and even if you don't recover the kick you're still putting the ball at about the 50 yard line or so and most teams bring almost every punt out to the 40 at least pressure coming gonna get rid of the football and incomplete intended over there for Blackwell, Blackwell. John Bushier coming that time. The, the blitz for the Leopards. And Bishop did a good job just getting rid of the football. Joe again. The routes. This is why both teams, all the routes are just going deep down the side of the field. If anybody would break one across the middle 20 yards down the field, uh, they should have wide open space to run it. And I, I kind of think that. They're going to put a lot more pressure, try to put more pressure on Bishop here in the second half as we saw that last blitz. Here comes the blitz again from the uh, defensive end. Going to throw it back here and uh, not going to be close to the intended receiver. He threw it to the area, Joe, but he didn't have time to see where the receiver actually Pressure coming here. Time to, 
to look around, look for his receivers in the first half, and now uh, they're going to put some pressure on him, make him run out of that pocket. Joe, and Joe, he uh, did get rid of it now. Arkansas High looked at the punt here. Uh, this end of the field is almost surprising for the art punting. They do just a little pooch punt now inside the 20. Leopard's getting away from it. So the ball will be marked at the 18-yard line. The Leopards will take over their first and 10. 10.50 to play here in the third quarter. We're just underway as the Razorbacks lead 28 to 12. And again, four turnovers in the first half, four fumbles in the first half uh, for the Leopards. Uh, certainly gonna, gonna hurt you offensively. Put your defense in a, in a bad spot as well. But Joe, the, the Leopard offense now uh, has been unable to complete any passes. They did get some good runs going on, and we'll see if they try to run it now. They will. And the football off to Damian Henderson. Henderson going to get that corner. That's been the best running play in the ball game for the Leopards. Has been Henderson on that left side. They will get the first down. So a nice start for the second half for the Leopards. Anderson this time going to try the right side and nice job over there by Charles Stewart. Got a hand on him in the backfield, going to slow him up. Picks up about two yards. Second down and eight here for the Leopards. Again, no huddle. Zeke Brown, the quarterback, going to have some motion here as they try that little reverse type play they've had uh, some success with. Two men in motion at the same time, Joe? Yeah. It'll be second and 13 now for the Leopards. I think they've hit two men in motion again there, Ray. They, they didn't catch it that time. Yeah, I've noticed that one of the backs seems to take off just a little early on almost every play that they're running the ball. Third and about six. Third and six now for the Leopards. Brown going to keep it himself. Not going to get the first down. Picks up a couple Brown of yards. That's it. Tory Blair on the tackle Blair. for the Razorbacks. Blair with great speed. We've seen him run the football tonight. He's playing safety for the Razorbacks. He's returning punts for the Razorbacks. Selling popcorn, I think, at halftime as well. He's been Mr. Everything for and, the Razorbacks. And Blair is a 10-9 sprinter in the 100 meters, so he's got a lot of speed. And if I'm punting the football, I'm punting it away from Tory Blair. That's going to be roughing the punter on the Razorbacks. And, and Joe, now, you know, that time, him holding on to the ball like that, you know, he's threatening that he could be a runner or anything. Yeah. And uh, the problem is, if he is able to get that punt off before you hit him, you're going to get a penalty. And that's, uh, that's going to be the case, and that'll be a first down for the Leopards. First down for the Leopards. That was um, Charles Stewart who hit the punter Brown late right there.
And in that case, you can't actually hit the punter unless he takes off running down the field. Yeah, I agree, Joe. I, I think it's uh, tough for you to tell what he's doing because he's kind of just hold, wait, sitting back there waiting. Right. And, you know, a lot of these Australian rules, uh, you know, Australian football guys, they do take a few steps forward before they kick the ball, and so it is kind of tough sometimes. Ball rolled back to the quarterback. He's able to throw it, but unable to make the completion. Intended over there for Malik Watson. But again, you said this is the first half for a the fact that if you're the Leopards here, Razorback did this the first half, take a shot down the field. Uh, maybe it's not complete, but it kind of softens the defense up a little bit so that they can't play tough man-to-man -to -man on you. That's right. You've got to keep them honest. Anderson, the ball carrier here, going to cut it back to the uh, right, going to get about seven yards. And they need to blow the whistle. Anderson on the carry, taking by seven Razorbacks. So forward progress is going to take him, should take him all the way up past the 35-yard uh, Yeah, it should be about the 30, no, excuse me, the 44-yard line. I don't know line. where they're marking it there. He, he got well past that before they drove it. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, they marked him four yards back from where he got. Yeah, Elliot Coach is trying to tell them, the Elliot officials, that the officials not having any of it. So third and eight instead of really should have been third and four. Brown just going to chuck it out of bounds here as pressure coming and there's a, another penalty again. This this is Charles Stewart on the tackle. Intentional oh. grounding. Yep. Didn't throw it past the line of scrimmage, Joe. No. That'll be loss of down. He had, the, he had the right idea, get rid of the ball, don't take the sack, but uh, that's going to bring up fourth down and 14 yards or so, 15 yards. How yeah, it's Fourth gonna... and 19 yards. They lost an extra yard there. It was third and eight. Instead of fourth and 18, it's fourth Brown and 19 Brown. now. Blair deep to receive. Zeke Brown back to punt. Corey Blair back deep. Punt's going to roll, but it picks it up. And punter looked like it hurt his toe when he hit the yeah, ball. It's yeah, a different punter, isn't it? No, that's, yeah, that's Brown. I think he hit it off the end of the toe there. Yeah, yeah and that's smart. You get it off the end of your toe, for sure. Definitely. I never could understand those barefoot field goal yeah. kickers back in the 70s. <laughs> they're just, just tough, I guess. I never got that. Yeah, and they're kicking it. It's, it's, you know, 15 degrees, and they're kicking it barefooted. All right, so the Razorbacks here take over at their own 26-yard line. First and 10. Braylon Bishop, quarterback. Tory Blair, tailback. Blair with the carry. Going to get a couple. Blair on the carry. Taking down the number 25. And number 30, Sean White. Third quarter just roaring by. Down to seven minutes and 30 seconds left now. Second down, eight here for the Razorbacks. Bishop hits his man in the back with the ball. Receiver never turned to look for the ball, Joe. Uh -uh, no, that was uh, green. And, and, you know, Bishop's just throwing it to a spot. And the, and the receivers kind of turn around and look for the football. Uh, yeah, it, it really looked like they're not on the same page. You know, in a lot of cases, it looks like it's the quarterback's fault, but it, many times it's the receiver who has not turned the right direction. Well, exactly, especially if you're watching the pros and it looks like the quarterback just threw it to the other team. 
Doesn't mean the quarterback wasn't at fault, but it's also very possible that the receiver was supposed to break his route off and go to that spot, and instead he doesn't, and it just looks the quarter, like the quarterback just threw it to the wrong team. Flag down at the 35, gonna be on the Leopards, I think. No, I don't know, I'm not sure, Joe. Let's see. Penalty was declined, fourth down, he was on right. the Razorbacks. All right, so I think it was a hold. So the Leopards will decline that. Shannon Roy back to, to receive the punt. And Sean Fullback to bid it away for the Razorbacks. High punt. I don't think he signaled for a fair catch. He did, did not. He? And but you can't hit him or interfere with him until he touches the ball. But Roy got his hands on it, then dropped it. It's so unfortunate to get it back. And that's just a youthful uh, inexperience there, Joe, to, no, to not signal on that. That was a nice high punt. He knew he was going to be surrounded by Razorbacks as that ball came down. Yeah, and Forback punting into the wind there, and he, and he still got great distance on it and height, and kind of held up there. So uh, probably what, what Shannon Roy should have done was just gotten away from the football. <laughs> Well, screen pass going to be complete to Henderson, but for a loss of four yards. Razorbacks all over that one. Larry Jefferson and Dante Willis. Joe, what we're not seeing, we're not seeing bubble screens. Uh, we're not seeing crossing patterns out of either team. Corbin White in motion, gets the handoff. And a little jet sweep. Going to pick up a couple. He's taken down by number 47. Brought down by Gre uh, Taylor. Taylor. Third down and 11. So third and 11 here for the Leopards. 6.15 to play in the third quarter. Same score we had at halftime, 28 to 12 for the Razorbacks. Brown back to pass. He's going to throw it well over the head of the intended receiver. Stopping the clock, bringing up fourth down. DeAndre Wafer, the intended receiver. And again, Brown's throwing with a, a little bit of a breeze there, so probably about 10 yards over the receiver. Round back deep to punt. Razorbacks don't have anybody deep this time. They can, could be a fake. Got a low line drive. Going to take a great bounce. Inside the 10, still going down, to, down the to the five and inside the inside five. The five. There we go. A nice job there. Uh, so 48 yard punt there for Brown. And the Razorbacks will take over at their own five yard line here with 5.51 to play in the third quarter. A pretty good uh, breeze kicking up here now. There's been some weather other areas south of here. Don't know if any of it's uh, approaching our area, but right now it's, uh, it's just a little breezy. Now the Razorbacks backed up deep in their own territory here at the five yard line. Blair, the ball carrier. Bishop did a nice job that time getting the snap. The snap was off to the side and he was able to snag it and get it to Tory Blair there in rhythm. Blair picked up four there on first down. When you look at the Leopards defensively, Ray, they got they've got they're playing pretty deep. They got a deep safety in the middle of the field. Their cornerback here is 
about eight yards off the a receiver about seven or eight on the other side. And, uh, Quarterback falls down. Yeah. Bishop going to be dropped at the four yard line. One of the leopards, one of the leopards, I guess, tried to jump over him, got him a little bit, but I, I think he was just trying to stop. I think he was trying to put an extra hit on him. So it'll be a third down and 11 right here for the Razorbacks. So if again, you said this in the first half, you, when you're back up deep like this, and you got a third and long, you know, you want to try to get the first down, but again, at the same time, you cannot force it if you don't have an open receiver right here. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see Blair carry the football here. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all for that. Yep, they they're going to throw it. And Bishop in the end zone, getting rid of it, and it's going to be intercepted. No, no almost, almost picked off. Let's see, that was uh, Cavante Featherson got his hands on the football. And Shannon Roy was there as well. And Joe, there's one train of thought that people will use. Well, long interceptions just as good as a punt. Well, it can be effective, except if the man's able to return it 30 yards. Because right. there's not going to be any coverage down there. And had that been the case, if they got that ball, they would have returned it probably inside the 20 or 15 yard line. So Sean Fullback going to have his heels on the in line here. Good snap, gonna get it away. It's gonna be a short punt. No fair catch called. It's gonna go backwards. Takes, and then and settles be, in about the 27 yard yeah. line, Joe. So a 23 yard punt is the fullback kind of punting into the wind there. So the Leopards will get great field position at the 27 yard line of the Razorbacks. Now, if you're the Leopards right here, Ray, you're down 28 to 12. You got 405 to play the third quarter. Tremendous field position at 27. You you got to get some points right here. Absolutely, Joe. This is a this is a crucial possession for the Leopards. Quarterbacking for is number 12, Parker Goodman. All right, so new quarterback in here, Parker Goodman, junior quarterback for the Leopards. We thought we'd see some out of him. And a little reverse, reverse coming. And let's see who the ball carrier is. That is Corbin White. He picks up about seven Larry yards, Larry Joe, so that's a nice Jefferson. effective play. Larry Jefferson makes the tackle. And you know, you talked about this earlier, Ray. You got to do some misdirection kind of stuff. The Razorbacks have really had a lot of penetration on the running plays. And there you see, he turns the corner, gets another eight or nine yards, and that's going to be a first down. T.J. Templeton with a nice run there, gets the, gets, the, gets the first down. This is a replay of the reverse. Good block back there. Good block downfield by the receivers. So a first and goal to 10 yard line for the Leopards. Joe, Leopards here, first down. Damian White, nice move, cuts it back, and touchdown for the Leopards. Joe, it looked like there was nothing there, and then all of a sudden there was a nice little crease, and he found it. And you know, the thing about Damian Henderson, we know he's got great speed, right, but he waited on his blockers, and, and he got a couple of good blocks there and made something out of nothing, really, and uh, uh, gets it into the end zone for the Leopards. So as we said, a must-score opportunity here, and the Leopards come through with the touchdown. Joe, I think they're just going to line up and go for two this time. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you're going to have any kind of trick, trickery or anything like that. I think you just go for two. But you better hurry, you're down to four seconds. And yeah, they're gonna have to call a timeout as they discuss this two-point play. And let's uh, let's take a look here at the replay for Texas A&M University, Texarkana. Hand off to Damian Henderson, makes a cutback there, makes another cutback, and a nice job. Nice job there by Damian Henderson to get the touchdown for the Razorbacks. For the Leopards. Uh, excuse me, for the Leopards. The Razorbacks there, you know, put themselves in a bad position, letting the Leopards start at the 27 yard line. And so uh, the Leopards pull within 10 points right here. 
believe you've got to give half that touchdown to the defense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and a good punt there from Brown. He got the 48-yard punt down to the five-yard line. And the defense with a nice job of holding the Razorbacks. Well, the Leopards here talking about what they're going to do on this two-point conversion. And we've not seen an extra point attempt uh, from the, the, the Leopards tonight. <laughs> and looks like we won't see one here. They're going to go for the two-point conversion. I think they had, they were. That's right. They tried two fakes. And they got Shannon Rory back here at the quarterback spot. They've got four receivers and only three defenders on the right. A little bubble kind of screen there is going to be complete to Henderson. From Shannon Rory, they get the two-point conversion. So the Leopards close within eight points here. The Razorbacks with 2:48 to play in the third quarter. We'll be back right after this. If you find yourself in need of emergency care, come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We are locally owned with board certified physicians for all your emergencies. We accept all private insurance. At Texarkana Emergency Center, we have on-site lab, pharmacy, x-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. Real ER without the wait. The next generation of emergency care. What's so special about credit union? You! What's so special about Millway? You! At Millway, you'll find it's comfortable to talk to us about your money and your financial goals. You'll see that we're truly concerned about helping you reach your goals. It's about lower loan rates, fewer fees, and higher returns on your savings. It's, it's all about taking care of you, the member, and helping you with your financial needs. Our goal is to make your life more affordable and enjoyable for you and your family. 28 to 20 for the Razorbacks over the Leopards here at Harris Field. Nice drive there from the Leopard offense. Ray, you, you, you really called it. The Leopard defense a great job pinning the Razorbacks back deep, not letting them get the first down, getting the short punt, and the offense doing the rest. Short kickoff here at the 22-yard line. And uh, Taylor with the return here. Taylor going to get it up to the 43-yard line. Good coverage. 22-yard return there for Taylor. Well, the Razorbacks take over first to 10 at their own 43-yard line. Up 28 to 20 now. 2:41 to play here in the third quarter. And Joe, again, if you look at the field position, they're at their own 43-yard line. If you onside kick, they're going to be around their own 46-yard line right. if they get the ball. So you're talking a three-yard difference, and yet you have a chance to get that ball back every time. Right. Bishop awaits the snap. He's got it. And pass is complete for nine yards. Nice catch there that is in traffic by number four. Tylee Green. Joe, and I mean, he was in traffic and he came down with that ball. Yeah, that was a nice job there. Nice job of hanging on to that football. Well, they're going to give him the first down. Looked like he was about a half yard short. First and 10 at the 48 for the Razorbacks. Tailback with the carry straight up the middle. And that is Blair. Blair on the carry. Take down my number. Razorbacks seem to be balancing their offense a little more. Uh, mixing even, even, even amounts of runs and passes. They almost threw two passes for every running play in the first half. Yeah, a little bit more balance here in the second half for the Razorbacks. Bishop back to pass. Pass is complete at the 40 yard line. Pass oh, it's incomplete. Dropped over there by Green this time. The third down and eight here for the Razorbacks. 146 to play in the third quarter. Razorbacks up 28 to 20. Hand it off to Blair. Blair is going to be 
Dropped about three yards short of the first down marker. Razorbacks with good field position. The clock is on their side, Joe, and they're using it now. So uh, bringing up, you know, working it. So it's fourth down, but only three yards to go. They're into Leopard territory. Might as well go for it. Balls on the ground, and the Leopards have the football. I don't think he was ready for the snap. I think the snap came yeah. before he was looking for it, Joe. So Kalen Hampton comes up with it. Yeah, I think uh, and I think that uh, Bishop went straight to his center and, and said, you know, he, he snapped it too early. He was still kind of directing traffic there. So the Razorbacks with their third turnover. We'll see here on the replay from A&M Texarkana University. And yeah, he just wasn't ready for it. So a nice drive there. Going to go by the wayside with the turnover. Henderson, the ball carrier, there's going to be a hole. All that's going to be for Nault from Henderson. Yeah, it's coming back. That's a great run by Henderson. He's still going. Still going, but. But there was a hole at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, at the 43-yard line, so that's coming back. Yeah, that's a great run by Damian Henderson, and that'll be on some highlight reel, but it's not going to count. All for naught. And uh, instead of uh, picking up about 45 yards, you'll see here on the replay, there, there's the there's flag. The hold. Yeah. Instead of uh, a 45 yard pickup, you're going to have a 10 yard loss on the hold. And, and it was a clear hold. You got three different flags down. Yeah. The guy just got tackled for the yeah. Razorbacks. He could have sewn himself a cape, like a superhero <laughs> with all those yellow flags. Uh, first down at 20 now, instead of knocking on the door for the touchdown. Balls, balls on, on the, the ground, ground. He picks it up. Picked it up. And, and gonna he's going to lose, lose yardage. Yards. It's Templeton, the ball carrier. The... Uh, the Leopards have had a hard time hanging on to the football they tonight. Have, Joe. You would think the field was wet, but it's not. And, and again, to me, it, you know, that one and several of them, it looks like they're just taking their eye off the football. Second 25 now. Back to pass here. Going to air it out, and it's going to be incomplete. Pass from Parker Goodman is broken up. Intended for Wafer. Jalen Shaw broke it up for the Razorbacks. That was one of those jump ball things, and neither player able to come up with it. And Joe, uh, that's going to bring up third and 25. You know, uh, I mean, if they'd have uh, gotten 10 or 12 yards over the middle or something bring up third and a lot more manageable. Goodman back to pass. Pass is going to be complete, but short yardage gets it back to the 30-yard line. So it's going to be a fourth down and 22 for the Leopards. That should be the last play of the third quarter as the clock winds down to one second now. And that will end the third quarter here from Harris Field with our score, Arkansas High 28, Lubiano 20. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy. I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orshovy.com. The new or pre-check tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orshovy.com or pre-check. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to Or Chevy, where buying a car is easy. Surf orshovy.com!
Welcome back for the fourth quarter here at Harris Field as the Razorbacks hanging on to a 28-20 lead over the Liberty Allo Leopards, the home team here. And the Leopards facing the fourth down at 22. And uh, they're, they're going to let Parker Goodman punt the football. We saw Zeke Norman, uh, or excuse me, Zeke Brown, the uh, quarterback punt for the Leopards. Now the new quarterback's punting for the Leopards. Low oh, snap. Oh, he's and uh, ball's going to be covered up by the Razorbacks at the 11 yard line. Also didn't look like he was ready for that snap. No. Yeah, they, they got some snap problems for sure. We've seen punt over the head. A, uh, two of them over the head. Two of them one over the of head. Them, the penalty was called just as the ball yeah. was snapped. Another high one. That one on the ground. And then uh, the air, you know, we're, we're seeing some, some issues with, uh, with snapping for sure here for the Leopards. You know, that's one of those things you always talk about, the deep snapper. You know, the deep snappers will tell you they don't want their name to be called. Nope, that's if right. It's, if it's called, it's because they messed up. And it's a very important position. There was a tight end from Louisiana Tech who stayed in the NFL for something like 13 or 14 years as a deep snapper named Trey Junkin. First and 10 for the Razorbacks at the 11. Clear the ball carrier. Blair still on his feet, getting a lot of help from his teammates. And all the way down inside the five to about the three yard line. Those big offensive linemen get in there and, and push the ball carrier and help him get an extra three or four yards. It'll be second down and two for the Leopards. Three for the touchdown, uh, excuse me, for the Razorbacks. You know, the Razorbacks have had a lot of uh, very short drives here this evening. They have a lot of short field drives. Blair again, the ball carrier, down close to the goal line. Don't think he's in this time. No, he's a clear, good shot there from the sidelines. He's out there about the one yard line. But he will have the first down, so it'll be first and goal for the Razorbacks. This is where you, you have to resist the temptation to get cute. Yeah. Where you, you really want your quarterback to be able to get under center and just surge forward. But, you know, uh, teams that don't ever do that, when you have to snap the ball back four or five yards, it's a real issue of having to take it back five yards and then bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Player of the ball here is not going to get in. The interior of that line going to hold him up. At the bottom of the pile for the Leopards was Trayvon Revels. So it'll be second and goal for the, the Razorbacks. Ball. Inside the one. Yeah, it's inside the one. About the half yard line, looks like. I, I think you do the same thing right here, right? Just hand it to Blair. You got you got three more downs. He's oh, Bishop kind of hold it and, and just walk in for the touchdown. The entire Leopard team just hit Blair with everything they had. Yeah. Bishop just kept the ball. That's a great play call there from the Razorback offensive staff. And Bishop did a good job of selling it right there. Everybody tackled Blair, which for a loss, but he didn't have the football. Nine, Very back back well on the executed play. Yeah. And that's what you want to see out of your, you know, your spread option type plays, your misdirection. The quarterback has to be part of the running game. That's right. Christian Stewart on for the extra point. Kick is up and it is good. We're going to see a replay here of the touchdown. Nice job by Braylon Bishop here, making the handoff and goes in untouched for the Razorbacks. So our new score, 35 to 20. We'll be back after this. 
Every day, the Texarkana Arkansas School District helps students realize their full potential. We are a community rich in talent and strength, all working together to enhance the lives of our students and committed to providing students the tools they need to succeed. At TASD, you will find state-of-the-art technology, a dedicated staff, and an award-winning approach to education. We know that every student is different, so we think our schools should be too. Become a Razorback and realize your full potential. 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams, it was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected. But his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're going to go back out and play the second half because we've only played the first half. I'm Craig Jenkins, pastor at Beach Street. Maybe you've been running the wrong direction. Let me say this to you. It's only the first half. There's still a second half to go. You've got an opportunity to make a change and a new direction in your life. I'd like to invite you to Beach Street this Sunday at 8.15 or 10.45. Kicked by Christian Stewart. Going to be gathered in at the 25. Shannon Rory out to midfield and run out of bounds about the 46 of the Razorbacks. So great field position here for the Leopards on offense. And let's see if they can answer that Razorback touchdown. And once again, Joe, an onside kick would have actually uh, had the Leopards 10 yards further back. Yeah. Even if the Razorbacks didn't get the ball. And we saw the Razorbacks actually uh, complete an onside kick to end the first half uh, and uh, to recover it by time had run out. So we know they can do it. Now first and 10 for the Leopards at the 46 of the Razorbacks. Goodman gets the snap, hands the football off to Temple. Gonna get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. The tackle for the Razorbacks is Michael Johnson. Second and 10 for the Leopards. Goodman's got the football and there's a flag down. It's going to be a hold. Look, a, look, a, lot, a little confusion there on the uh, on the play. Officials discussing it right here. If you're the Razorbacks, uh, you're looking at third and nine, or you can back them up and have it second and nineteen. So Razorback's going to accept the penalty. Going to be second down and 19 now. I think Joe, the Leopards, the Leopards need to not be afraid to run that ball or throw a short pass. Just get eight or nine yards. Goodman going down the field. He's got a man there, and it is complete to number eight, there. Malik Watson. Joe keeps his feet in bounds. That's incredible. That's a nice job there. Watson, the ball was thrown to the outside. Watson with great balance, great control, able to get a foot down and, and complete that pass. Leopards look like they're going to try to hurry up. Here's a replay right here by Texas A&M University, Texarkana. Nice throw by Goodman. And yeah, does a nice job getting, the, getting that foot down. Goodman again with the uh, carry again. Looked like a, a, a busted play again. Yeah, I'm not sure, Joe. He, he started stepping to the right a couple of steps, and then he looks like he deliberately went back to the left. I thought he was trying to get the Razorbacks to over pursue. Picked up five there, did Goodman. Second down at five. Big opening there. Henderson, the ball carrier, is going to have the first down inside the five and touchdown for the Leopards. 
as Damian Henderson tiptoes down the sideline, gets into the end zone, takes a hard shot as he gets into the end zone. Hope he's okay. And a great job there by Damian Henderson. Hope we got a replay of that because that was a tremendous run right there by Damian Henderson. There we go. Look at here. Okay, watch Henderson gets a nice block, keeps his feet, jumps over a defender, and gets into the end zone. Tremendous run there. Aguilar off for the extra point. Kick is up, and the kick is good. 35-27, our score here. Harris Field will be back after this. When it comes to priorities, your family always comes first. History has brought you to this point. Generations have led the way. At Red River Credit Union, the tradition continues. Financial options are available for every age, including checking and savings accounts and financial counseling. Members enjoy mobile banking and direct deposit, and children use their Homer accounts at Red River to learn how to save for the future. Red River Credit Union, with locations in Shreveport, Grambling, and now open in Marshall, Texas. What's so special about Credit Union? You! What's so special about Millway? You! At Millway, you'll find it's comfortable to talk to us about your money and your financial goals. You'll see that we're truly concerned about helping you reach your goals. It's about lower loan rates, fewer fees, and higher returns on your savings. It's, it's all about taking care of you, the member, and helping you with your financial needs. Our goal is to make your life more affordable and enjoyable for you and your family. Here at Harris Field, 35-27, our new score as the Leopards do indeed answer the Razorbacks. And uh, do we see an onside kick right here? I would think so, yep, and we here, do. There it is, but too far down the field. And uh, going to be picked up and returned to the 47-yard line. And Joe, I would categorize I would categorize that more as a squib kick. Yeah. It really wasn't that, that 10 yard right. onside type kick where you're trying to kick it more to the sideline. All right, so return to the 47 yard line of the Razorbacks. The Razorbacks will start there first and 10, 8.37 to play in the ball game. And we've, we've, it's turned into a whaleable ball game here. Both teams' uh, offenses have warmed up here in the second half for sure. Leopards have scored 15 points in the second half. Razorbacks uh, have scored seven, but have looked at, both teams have looked a lot better offensively in the second half. Low pass here from Bishop, intended for uh, Lewis Blackwell, incomplete. So. 834 left in the game that that stops the clock that does not work in Arkansas High's favor they need to be they need to keep that clock running yeah I would, I would think you would try to run some running plays here just keep that clock rolling pass there you across go, the middle it is complete to the tight end and still on his feet throws a man down and that's picks very, up the first down. That's a very bold play by that tight end. Uh, obviously, he's, he's a little tough to bring down. Jackson Harris, junior tight end, 6'1", 215 for the Rosebacks. Uh, I'd say he's tough to bring down for sure. First time we've seen the tight end targeted by either team tonight. That's right. Very few passes have been over the middle, Joe. They've all been to the flat or to the sidelines. Justice Ray, your ride is waiting. We got Take the, a look at the replay the here. Replay here. Harris is throwing their defender down. So first and ten for the Razorbacks. Tory Blair going to carry it right here. He's got the got right the side. Corner. He's got some running room and. Blair going to be run out of bounds at around the two-yard line. Out of bounds by number one, Roy. We're going to say he ran out of bounds at the 
four, I believe. And Joe, here's a perfect situation. The Razorbacks need to keep this ball on the ground. Yeah. Try to punch it in. It doesn't matter if it takes two or three plays. Run that clock down. Absolutely. It's not even that big a disaster if you don't get in. If you run four straight plays, or I guess run three and then finally kick the field goal if you have to, that puts you up two scores. Yeah, they definitely have the ability to kick a field goal from this distance. We're going to carry it into the pile down to the about the one yard line. Taken down by several teams. They should be able to take 40 seconds off the clock and do it again if they don't get in. They could run this thing down to five minutes and then kick a field goal. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think they're thinking field goal right here with the ball on the one yard line. No, I agree. That's not what they're thinking, but they don't need to um, get cute. Try. They yeah. don't need to get cute. Just yeah. run the ball straight ahead. If you get in, that's great. If you don't get in, you take time off the clock. Bishop going to keep it himself and He's in. no, he got no, stopped stopped short. The Bishop on the That's the same play they scored forward. on a minute ago. Yeah, there's back. Uh, excuse me, Liberty Alo defense much better finish. that time. Third down for the I don't think they're. Let's see where they placed the ball. Yeah, it's inside the one. Got a half a yard. So third and goal here for the Razorbacks. And nice job by that Leopard defense. Down the backfield. Keontae Durant Featherstone down and Karana Eaton in there for the Leopard. So now it's fourth down. <laughs> And about two for the Razorbacks. Joe, uh, Joe, I believe you kicked the field. Yeah, I don't think there's any. You make it a two-score game. Any doubt. Razorbacks going to take a time out and talk about it, but I think you're exactly right. So 6-13 to play here in the ball game, and we'll take a break. At Liberty Allo High School, a variety of opportunities exist to teach students how to be productive members of society. Dual credit college courses ensure that LEHS graduates have a head start on their continuing education. Extensive career and technical education offerings give students job-ready skills to compete in a shrinking job market. Extracurricular activities, including band, academic UIL, and theater, allow students to display outstanding artistic skills. And as always, LEHS athletic teams are among the top in the state. Liberty Isle High School truly is a great place for students and educators. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy, I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orshowdy.com. The new or pre-check tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orshowdy.com or pre-check. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to Or Chevy, we're buying a car is easy. Surf Or Chevy. .com. 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams, it was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected, but his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're going to go back out and play the second half. Christian Stewart on for the 19-yard field goal. Kick is up, and the kick is good. And our new score is 38-27 for the Razorbacks. We'll take a break and be back after a word from our sponsors. Alex, are you still playing Fortnite? No, Poppy, I want a car, so I'm checking my credit score and interest rates on orshowdy.com. The new or pre-check tool that gives you real-time information with no effect on your credit score. I want a truck, too! Hold it, boys. None of y'all are getting a truck anytime soon. Check out orshowdy.com or pre-check. Get pre-approved in minutes. So easy a kid can do it. So come to Or Chevy. We're buying a car is easy. Surf or Chevy. Dot com. 1929 Rose Bowl featured two powerhouse teams, Georgia Tech and California. 
Uh, but the talk wasn't about the two teams. It was about one player that no one had ever heard of. His name was Roy Rigels. After picking up a fumble, he got disoriented and began to run toward the end zone. Problem is, he was running towards the wrong end zone. In fact, one of his own teammates tackled him before he scored a touchdown for the other team. You can imagine he went into the locker room embarrassed and dejected. But his coach came and put his arm around him and told him, Roy, you're going to go back out and play the second half because we've only played the first half. I'm Craig Jenkins, pastor at B Street. Maybe you've been running the wrong direction. Let me say this to you. It's only the first half. There's still a second half to go. You've got an opportunity to make a change and a new direction in your life. I'd like to invite you to Beach Street this Sunday at 815 or 1045. In one of those services, you're going to be encouraged to go in a different direction. I look forward to seeing you there. Thirty-eight twenty-seven. the new score here after the 19-yard field goal by Christian Stewart, who's kicking off for the Razorbacks. Kicks it down to the 11-yard line where Corbin White was a shoestring tackle away from taking that to the house. And folks, you might have seen the ball come out, but it came out when he hit the ground. Ground cannot cause a fumble. Well, the Leopards will have the football at, uh, let's see where they mark it here. Let's see, they're gonna mark it at the 33-yard uh, line. And every time the Razorbacks have scored, we've seen the Leopards answer here uh, in the second half. It uh, has turned into a really nice ball game. It really the first has. Half was, first half was uh, first half of football for any team in a year. Yeah. A lot of errors. Oh, yeah. A lot of... Uh, both, both teams have settled down and, and played very nice offensive football in the second half. Good one on the keeper. And you got to think defenses for both they teams have, have had a little bit of fatigue here, as many offensive plays as each team has had. Pickup of three there by Parker Goodman. Henderson, the ball carrier. Henderson going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And nothing else. About five minutes and 40 Jefferson. seconds left now in the game. Jacoby Hall, Larry Jefferson on the tackle. Third down. We'll say he made a yard there. Third and six for the Leopards. This is really, this is a critical down right here for the Leopards. They really need to pick up this first down. Goodman back to pass and going to be well over the head of the intended Good receiver. Good coverage there by the Razorback defender, number 81. And, and it's very, what I don't understand right there, you got third and seven or six. Why are you throwing a 40-yard pass right there? I don't know. That was Marcus Davis. Yeah, uh, and that's your problem, Joe. I mean, you've got to throw some intermediate passes, some crossing routes. Look how effective the little little 10-yard, uh, 12-yard pass to the tight end was right. for the Razorbacks on the last possession. Good. Going to be back to punt here for the Leopards. Blair will be back deep for the Razorbacks. Well, he's going to throw it. And it's going to be incomplete. Another fake here on fourth down, not successful. Joe, when you have fourth and really long in your in your own territory, I don't know why. To me, I don't think there's a reason to fake punt it. Just line up your offense. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is the fifth. I think fake we've seen from them. Yeah, so two on extra points and three on punts. Where's the back defense? They're not. They're, they're not, not even get dropping deep punt. back here. No, yeah, they're not believing it's a punt. So. Yeah, like yeah. you said, better better just line up as an offense, and you got a better shot that way. So 4:58 here now. If you're the Razorbacks, ready, you're up 11 run points. Got to run, run the clock. Run it. You know the Leopards still do. They still have three timeouts. But, and I'm the Razorbacks, I'm keeping this thing on the ground. Nope, they're going to pass it. 
And uh, going for the home run here is batted away. Nice play. They're going to. And that is Samaj Rose. Number two, yes, absolutely. Nice job by Rose there. And, you know, you just take a couple of seconds off the clock here. And again, the Leopards still have three timeouts. I, I would run the football and force them to take their timeouts. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand that play. Unless you think, you know, you got them pulled in, they think there's going to be a run. You're trying to hit the home run ball. Tory Blair, the ball carrier. Blair on the carry. Taking down by number 16, Hampton, and number 30, Sean White. Bring up third down for the Razorbacks. So, Joe, the uh, Razorbacks with the ball here, third down. Assuming, just make an assumption they're not going to punt. Yeah, I don't think there's any way they're going to punt. Third and nine, I'm, I'm looking for five or six yards here, and then I'm going to go for it on fourth down. And, and they have a chance right now to go ahead and take it down to three minutes and 20 seconds left. Yeah, and, and Liberty Allo has got three timeouts. And they're going to use yeah, one. And they're going to use one right here. 3.59 to play in the ball game. 38-27 for the Razorbacks. We'll be back after this. What is the Eagle experience for me? It's fun. I love it. The Eagle experience for me, the sports is great. I made a lot of great friends. It's a big school in a small package. I study business administration. The professors are great. We're very involved in the community. My name is Michael Herrera, and I play baseball at Texas a and Fisher County. My name is Allie, and I'm from Little Elm, Texas. I'm Danny, and I'm a senior at Texas A&M University, Texarkana. Hey, we're back here at Harris Field. As Ray, we were talking about, this has turned into a really nice ball game here. And it usually is between these two teams, you know, 10 miles apart here, inner city rivalry. And uh, it's really one of those games that's for pride. You know, it doesn't affect district or conference play or whatever. And this is kind of the start of the Battle of Texas, Canada, if you will, here tonight. Next week, we'll have Arkansas High. Texas High. The next week we'll have Liberty Allo at Texas High. Uh, and so, you know, kind of a uh, informal battle of Texarkana here starting off tonight at Liberty Allo. Always a lot of fun to bring Texarkana football to our fans. A lot of great football players, a lot of great tradition throughout this East Texas area. And we, we end up covering teams like Gilmer and teams like Atlanta. And, uh, we've covered, you know, New Boston, Hooks. Genoa, Genoa Falk. Falk. Well, uh, this year we've added Redwater. We'll see Redwater, Redwater, Redwater Dragons. So a lot of local football. And, you know, if you look through the history and tradition of football in East Texas, there are some of the greatest players in the history of football have come oh, yeah. out of this part of the country. Also, we'll have Carthage at Pleasant Grove this year. So that ought to be a whale of a ball game. Both those two, uh, those teams state ranked. Uh, so should be a tremendous ball game there. Also want to remind our fans of the new KLFI TV app. You can go on Apple, uh, Roku, Android, Google Play, download KLFI, the app, and see all of our local sports programs from football, basketball, baseball, uh, softball. Uh, all of our local program like Heart to Heart, Aging Insight, and others. And, uh, and as you said earlier, Ray, people around the world can, can see KLFI TV. No matter how far from home you are, if you can connect to the internet, you can watch your local KLFI programs. It's been a long time out right here. Maybe it's a TV timeout. Yeah, I think so. That's what's happening is apparently the television station must be running a lot of commercials. <laughs> uh, so fourth down here for the Razorbacks. And as we talked about, they're not going to punt it for sure. Razorbacks line up for fourth down. No, they're not going to get to run the 40 seconds off the clock because the uh, leverage used a timeout. 
And in this case, it doesn't really matter whether you throw it or whether you run it, because as soon as the play is over, the clock's going to stop. Here comes the pressure. Bishop's going to run away from it. He's going to have the first down. down. Stay in bounds. Gonna get out of bounds. No, nope, he's going to run out of bounds. See, if he, if he stayed in bounds, yes, the clock would stop, but it would only stop until they reset the chains, and then it would begin moving again. And he would force Liberty Allo to take another time out if they wanted to stop the clock. That's right, and uh, this is the kind of thing that coaches have to sit down and go over the young men, with the young men about this, the, you know, situational awareness is what you would call it, and it's a skill that has to be worked on just like uh, any other skill, just like catching the football or anything else. Uh, situational awareness is crucial. Now it only took seven seconds, but it is first and ten here for the Razorbacks. Blair going to be the ball carrier. Going to get to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Nope, I'm out of loss the yard. Let's see where they put the football. Yep, they're going to say he lost two yards. Well, we'll say a yard, so second down 11. Razorbacks here are going to. They can take that clock all the yeah. way down to about 3.05. They're going to take their time here. I would be very shocked if the Razorbacks threw the football. There's no reason to throw the football, Joe. The re there's every reason to keep it on the ground. Bishop's going to keep it himself inside the 20. This time he slides out. Coach has told him, yes, stay in bounds. I believe a message may have come in from the sideline. Yeah. And Leopard's going to be forced to take another the timeout here at 2.54 to play. We're back after this. If you find yourself in need of emergency care, come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We are locally owned with board certified physicians for all your emergencies. We accept all private insurance. At Texarkana Emergency Center, we have on-site lab, pharmacy, x-ray, ultrasound, and CT. Come see us at Texarkana Emergency Center. Real ER without the wait. The next generation of emergency care. Every day, the Texarkana Arkansas School District helps students realize their full potential. We are a community rich in talent and strength, all working together to enhance the lives of our students and committed to providing students the tools they need to succeed. At TASD, you will find state-of-the-art technology, a dedicated staff, and an award-winning approach to education. We know that every student is different, so we think our schools should be too. Become a Razorback and realize your full potential. Blair with the carry for the Razorbacks, going to get to the outside, bounce. slides down, Blair keeps the clock here. going. Leopards take their last timeout. With 2.38 to play here. Uh, let's see. No, let's see. They take oh. a timeout? Yep. Yes, clock they did. Stopped. Yes, it is. So that's the last time out here. 2.38 to play. Razorbacks up 38-27. And Razorbacks will be facing a third down and two. What are the odds that they throw the football here? Now they've just changed it to fourth down. Okay, all right. So it's fourth down and two. That's right. I missed a play there. So it's fourth and two. Um, I, you still you just run the ball. Yeah, I think you just run just the football. Run the ball. I mean, you're up 11. Uh, even if you don't get the first down right here. You put them down there so deep in the yeah, territory. Uh, and you got 88 yards, 89 yards to go. Uh, and again, and again, no timeouts. That incomplete pass and the going out of bounds was a 45 to 50 second difference on that clock. And you're looking at 238 that the Leopards have to work with. Right. Uh, again, now you can throw the ball here if you have to because uh, the clock's going to stop if you don't make the first down anyway. What you can't do is force it and throw you an interception and have it returned for a touchdown. 
or throw an interception in the end zone and let them uh, bring the ball out to the 20. Right. If you're Braylon Bishop right here, if you're throwing the football, you'd be better off just throwing it away if you don't have an open receiver. Yep, and that's going to be another offside penalty. And that will be a first down, and the Razorbacks might be well, able to they're going to the say the Razorbacks moved, I think. Leopard's uh, happy over there. Let's see. It's possible. We may. Yep. We'll start against the Razorbacks. Yep. Well, the officials still talk about it, but it was a false start against the Razorbacks. Couldn't see it from our point of view right here where, who moves. Sometimes it's the center, the way they move the ball. Yeah. The side judge there, you know, obviously he's got the call. Coach Norton leading his case, but it's going to be for Nault. It's going to be fourth and seven now. I believe they will throw to the end zone on the right side. Oh, oh ball's loose, and uh, Leopards have Either way. recovered it and, and had a chance to return it there. <laughs> Brace right back offensive lineman and looked quarterback like Braylon Bishop to, get in on it. Looked like they were trying to do a direct snap yeah. to the running back. I think that's exactly what happened. Across. Recovered by Trey Reynolds, number 42. 42 recovered the football for the Leopards. That's Trayvon Revels and shaking up on the play. So Razorbacks will fumble the football away here. I believe that's four turnovers now for the Razorbacks. Here's the replay right here. And let's see. I don't no, know I think th what happened. The running back came in front of the snap. Yeah, it, it hit him. In, it hit, hit him in the helmet. helmet. Yeah, he, he was a fraction too quick there, and it hit him. So Leopards get the ball back here at 232. Parker Goodman back to pass. Got some pressure. Going to throw it out there. And that's good, good job by Henderson not to catch that football because he catches it. It's going to be a loss, and the clock's going to keep running. That's right. So it stops the clock here with 2.23 to play. Leopards down 11. They've got to get a touchdown. Get the ball back. And get a two-point conversion and then get the ball back. Parker Goodman awaits the snap. Back to pass. Here comes the pressure going down the field. He's just throwing it down there. I don't know why. A little shove in the back by the receiver on the defender. Yeah, there's been a there's no, little no jawing back and forth between those two. Really no reason for that. Davis. Third and ten for Loriano. So third and ten. And again, Ray, we're not seeing any kind of intermediate pass routes here. Just chunk it down the field and hope you get a pass interference or get a catch. So a screen. Here comes a screen. It's too hard. It. Threw it too hard there Again, for Henderson. It's, it's a middle screen. The problem is, even if it works, you've got four defensive linemen in the quarterback's face. Yeah. I mean, Henderson got his hands on the ball, but it was just high and hard. See, he has to throw the ball through the four oncoming defensive linemen. The fourth and ten now for the Leopards. Goodman's got pressure from Jefferson, steps up in the pocket, and it's going to be incomplete. If it had been completed, it wouldn't have got the first down. No, it was, it was short. But you, you got to know as a receiver where the first down marker is. So the Leopards going to turn it over on downs here. I believe the Razorbacks can, I believe they can take a knee. Yeah, I think we, you'll see that. Uh, or you might just see Tory Blair carry the football. 
they can run 120 seconds off the clock before fourth down. Yeah. We should take it down to 11 seconds. They have to snap the ball for fourth down. Well, the Razorbacks take over at the 22 of the Leopards. And you'll have Lewis Blackwell back at the 42 yard line. So 20 yards deep here is a deep safety for the Razorbacks. They're just gonna, they're gonna take a knee right here. And you Razorbacks will kneel the ball. Razorbacks should be able to let it run down to about one minute, 30 seconds. Yeah, no timeouts left here for the Leopards. And, and Ray, as we talked about in the opening, you know, opening ball game for both these teams, you know, you, you, you play some scrimmages and that kind of stuff, but really it's not, you know, it's not a real ball game. And so you've got nerves, uh, you know, it's a big inner city rivalry. Both teams have had a number of turnovers here in the ball game. Uh, you know, first half was, was pretty sloppy from both teams. Both teams have settled down and uh, had looked pretty good here in the they second half. a lot better in the second half. Again, the snap to Braylon Bishop, taking a knee. Joe, um, the Leopards are, you know, the, Just do yours, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Do, do the Arkansas high kid that Joe told you. Yeah, we uh, we we're trying to pick a player of the game. We've been having discussions back and forth here, and um, there's been several good candidates. Yeah, we 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 we've got some some good players here, and uh, have some discussions back and forth about who to pick. We were we were trying to come up with a couple different players, but we're we we're told we can only pick one. So we're going to pick that one player of the game. And that player is junior quarterback Braylon Bishop, number two of the Arkansas High Razorbacks. Razorbacks uh, are victorious tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll pick uh, Braylon Bishop as the MVP of the ball game here uh, because, of course, the Razorbacks won the, won the game. And, we said we had a number of different good, good candidates there. We could have picked from. Tory Blair had an outstanding game for the Razorbacks. Damian Henderson, a tremendous game, That's running right the for football the for the Leopards. And uh, uh, Zeke Brown had a nice ball game in his first start at quarterback for uh, the Leopards. But uh, there you see him on your in your shot, Braylon Bishop, number two, uh, his first start here for the Razorbacks, junior quarterback MVP here. Uh, for the Razorbacks, and the Razorbacks finish off this ball game with a 38-27 uh, win here uh, as they came uh, 10 miles across town to play the Liberty Idol Leopards, and what a lot of people have been looking forward to all summer long is uh, 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 being a available ball game. And it turned out to be that. It sure did. Oh, it did. Very, very competitive. It's just a lot of struggles there in the first half. Where will we be next week, Joe? Well, next week we're going to go over to uh, the Arkansas side of town to Razorback Stadium as the Texas High Tigers will come visit the Razorbacks of Arkansas High. And uh, again, you know, this is a big ball game right here. Anytime two two town two teams in the same town play each other, but. Uh, everybody's pointing to this one right here. And again, you know, you talk to both coaches, they'll say, you know, it's just another ball game. Yeah, everybody's got a lot of interest in it, but. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what they say. Yeah, but everybody wants to win that ball game right there for and sure. And you really can't even look at the records of the yeah. teams going in or anything else. That is such a big rivalry yeah. game. And it's for bragging rights for, you know, for the rest of the year. For 12 more months, you're going to have bragging rights, whoever uh, uh, won that ball game. And, and since Barry Norton has been the coach at Arkansas High, they've won the last two ball games. Uh, and so he'll go for three in a row here over the Tigers uh, next week. And so we'll be uh, glad that, uh, you know, we'll have that ball came and hope you can join us uh, as we uh, bring you another uh, exciting Texarkana football game. So we appreciate you watching tonight. And don't forget about the KLFI TV app. Uh, go online uh, to your Apple uh, device, Apple TV, your Roku, 
Google Play, Android device, and download KLFI. Tell your friends, family about it, and they can watch all of our outstanding programs here produced locally in Texarkana. So for Joe Adams, along with Ray Angle, all the staff here at KLFI TV, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Texarkana Football. This program has been brought to you by Baptist Bookstore, Chick-fil-A, Millway Credit Union, or Chevrolet, Red River Credit Union, Southern Arkansas University, Texarkana, Arkansas School District. Texas A&M, Texarkana. State Farm, Agent Greg Cockrell. University of Arkansas Hope in Texarkana. Pleasant Grove ISD. Guarantee Bank and Trust. Fox Sports, Texarkana. Liberty Ilo Independent School District, Texarkana Emergency Center, the Texarkana Independent School District, Beach Street First Baptist Church, and the Pop Pop Shop.